And good evening, everyone. We're live here at the 2023 National Liberal Convention in Ottawa. My name is Ariel Kayabaga. I'm the MP for London West, and I'm joined with my co-host. Bonjour, euh, bonsoir. Euh, ici Francis Drouin, député de Glengarry Prescott Russell. Nous sommes ici à la convention en 2023 avec plus de 4000 personnes ici ce soir. Bien sûr, euh, derrière nous, il n'y a pas encore euh, personne, mais Ariel et moi, on aura une bonne conversation. On va être, être euh, joints avec euh, Adam, qui va être notre collègue pour la fin de semaine. Uh, Ariel will be joined by our colleague Adam uh, Vancouverden, who will be uh, co-hosting uh, the live, Liberal Live event tonight. How do you feel tonight? So 4,000 participants yeah. here in person and live have signed up to join and it's exciting. I was chatting with people earlier. People are excited about the, the policies that they want to see pass forward. They're excited to be here. It's our first in-person convention. So this is really exciting. We've got the Shaw Club rocking tonight. I mean, uh, normally on a Thursday in Ottawa, I mean, they're talking about naming a nightmare, but we're truly uh, going to bring excitement to this place. Obviously, we're going to hear from the uh, president of uh, the Liberal Party, Susan Cowan. I think we're going to interview her later on tonight. Uh, on va avoir la chance, de, évidemment, d'entendre parler du premier ministre, uh, notre cher uh, Justin Trudeau, qui va uh, adresser cette, cette salle ici ce soir. Je pense qu'on a une bonne soirée uh, pour les spectateurs qui sont ici ce soir. And uh, we'll also, we want to make sure that you subscribe on our YouTube channel to follow all the good things that are in our program this weekend. So make sure you go to our YouTube. And if you're tweeting, if you're doing anything on social media, hashtag Lib2023. That's Lib, hashtag Lib2023. And to donate, please make sure that you text donate at 54222 or vis visit us on liberal.ca. Alors, pour nos collègues euh, francophones qui nous écoutent euh, ce soir, bien sûr, euh, si vous êtes sur Twitter, euh, hashtag Lib2023, lorsque vous, vous allez avoir des conversations avec nos, nos chers collègues libéraux à travers le pays, hashtag Lib2023. Et bien sûr, pour avoir plus d'informations, vous pouvez visiter le site web libéral.ca. Et si vous voulez faire un don, vous savez que les dons font une différence dans nos campagnes. Ils nous aident à, à financer nos campagnes partout à travers le Canada. Et c'est facile de faire un don. Tout ce que vous avez à faire, c'est d'envoyer un texto au 54222. Francis, I'm very excited to start chatting with some of the folks that we're going to see throughout the convention. We're going to chat with our co-chairs. Uh, I'm excited so to see... So who are our co-chairs oh, tonight? Like we're, they're going to come for on the weekend, shortly. Yeah. Yes, yes, but I'm especially excited for my new colleague of the team of 2021, Jenna Suds, who is an amazing MP, an amazing colleague, an amazing woman doing great things in Parliament. So uh, we're going to uh, soon start chatting with her. And wh who are you excited to see tonight? Well, obviously, uh, throughout the whole weekend, uh, the Prime Minister is going to speak tonight. I think that's going to be great. Um, I have to say something about our President, Susan Cowan, who's been amazing. You know, uh, yes. in 2021, uh, I had one of my volunteers who got bitten by a dog. There's no bite until you get in a campaign, until somebody get, actually gets bitten. But she took the time in 2021 to actually call uh, that volunteer and, and just say, Thank you. I mean, uh, it, it was tough for the campaign, but my volunteer was so happy to receive a call from uh, Ms. Cowan. On a toutes de belles histoires avec Suzanne Cowan, mais maintenant on va euh, accueillir euh, nos co-chairs du, du, de la convention, euh, Jenna Sutt qui est déjà là. On va viens t'en Jenna, Jenna. Hello. Hey, hey Jenna, Jenna welcome on stage. <laughs> come on. Uh. Hi, hi. Tell us how you're feeling right now. I am feeling energized. Uh, such a great start so far with uh, with our business so far, um, and excited for the next few days. Donc Jenna est très excitée pour ce qui se passe déjà puis pour tout le weekend. Jenna, tell us um, what you've done so far and what you're expecting to see this weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, so far I was able to go into the Young Liberals uh, Commission meeting as well as the Seniors Commission, which was wonderful to see. Uh, such great uh, conversation, but such great uh, people that are here that are helping to support the work that we do day in and day out. Uh, and then as well, we had our opening business. Uh, so, you know, the, the rigor that needs to happen uh, with, uh, with these types of conventions, getting our agenda passed, etc. So, a great start. And we have to ask, is this your first convention? This is my first convention. 
heard it here. And Jenna, do you want to tell us a little bit about your co-chairs that are not joining us right now, but they'll probably join us sometimes later? Yes, yeah. So uh, Stefan Lozon is uh, is one of our co-chairs, as well as Jesse, who uh, I believe is incoming president for uh, the Indigenous Peoples Commission. Uh, just had the pleasure of meeting him today, a great superstar. Uh, so really looking forward to co-chairing with both of them. I think we should try and get Stefan Lozon on stage. I, I, I saw him somewhere around here, somewhere, so I think we, we should try and get him uh, on stage soon. I think he's over there somewhere. On va pouvoir or essayer de l'amener à un moment donné, mais on doit continuer notre show. Thank you so much, Jenna, for joining yeah. us right now. We're going to welcome our, our next guest. Do you want to introduce our next guest? <gasps> our next guest, sometimes called the Energizer Bunny. Yeah. Minister Champagne, join us. Bienvenue à bord, uh, Minister Champagne. Wow, what a moment. Thank you very much. Excellent. God, we're we're in this together. I was just shaking hands. There's allô, a allô, allô. In the place. Listen, it's, it's, only like an hour. it's only like an hour and people are already energized. Les gens sont excités, les gens. Mais on t'a vu, puis l'énergie a monté. J'espère que l'énergie est en train de monter en ligne aussi. Moi, c'est mon premier rôle que j'ai fait Celebro Live. Alors moi, je me sens regarder les gens commencent à arriver. Hey everyone, welcome! Il y, y a déjà de l'énergie dans, dans la salle, les gens veulent rentrer. Il y a déjà... Moi, ce qui m'a impressionné beaucoup, c'était les jeunes. J'ai rencontré beaucoup de gens pour qui c'est leur toute première convention. Et ça, ça c'est un signe d'avenir. Parce que when you have the young people who are coming, a lot of young people, it's their first convention. I think we're on the right path. So, so uh, François-Philippe, any uh, tips for Ariel and I who are doing Liberal Live for the first time? Hey, listen, be authentic, be natural. Uh, it's one of the greatest jobs, actually, because you, you get to interview amazing people, don't you? No, I'm joking. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're getting to, to meet all the liberals, but also you make people at home feel part of the movement, feel part of the action. Uh, and, and that, I think, for me, is very important because uh, all the folks who are watching, there's many people for whom, you know, uh, they could not travel, they, they, they may have other obligations. Uh, but the fact that they can join us online is always a highlight because there's uh, probably thousands of people who are going to log in. And, and I would say you have to bring them the convention to them. And, and that's why I think this is one of the most uh, amazing job you could do. Uh, because we know our movement is across the nation. Our party has deep roots in every part of the country. So uh, it's the best job you could have at a convention. And I'm sure, uh, Minister, you must be excited to be here today knowing that you've delivered for Canadians, and I can speak on that as as a member of the Southwestern Ontario Caucus. I mean, can you tell us about the work that you're doing as the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry? Well, you may have heard the word Volkswagen, right? Yeah. By now, uh, and, and for me, Volkswagen is about us winning. It's about empowering Canadians. It's about ambition. It's about possibilities. It's about being who we can be as Canadians. And, and for me, Volkswagen is like changing communities in southwestern Ontario. It's about tens of thousands of jobs. It's about us winning in the, uh, um, the auto industry of the future. Uh, it, it's about rebuilding our, our economy for the challenges of the 21st century. And, and not only we did that, but you may know that about the same week, we announced that we're going back to the moon. And, and so this was like, again, Canada on the world stage saying, you know, we win big, we do big things. Uh, this time when we're going to the moon, we're going to write history. You know, I come from the, the, the Apollo generation where we looked at the TV while history was being made. This time we're going to be making history. Alors, c'est de, de très, très bien. Et bien sûr, vous avez parlé de Volkswagen, les investissements qui vont être faits, euh, mais en parlant des semi-conducteurs, on sait que c'est un, un, un produit qui est tellement important pour le Canada. Au Québec, il y a des, des investissements majeurs qui vont être faits. Parlez-nous de ça un peu. C'est assez impressionnant. Puis je veux vous rappeler le, le discours du président Biden. Vous savez, quand le président Biden est venu, c'était un grand moment pour le Canada. Mais le président a dit une chose qui était fondamentale, c'est que euh, lorsque les États-Unis et le Canada travaillent ensemble, on fait de grandes choses. Et, et vous savez, à l'époque, moi, j'avais parlé de ce corridor-là, dont on parle de Bromont à Albany, aux États-Unis. Et vraiment, l'idée derrière ça, c'est de s'insérer dans les chaînes d'approvisionnement stratégiques. On le fait en biofabrication. On veut le faire dans les semi-conducteurs, on va le faire dans le domaine des batteries, dans le domaine de l'automobile du futur. Alors, pour moi, c'est vraiment de bâtir. Puis vous savez que le premier ministre, qu'on s'était donné comme mission, c'était d'être le fournisseur vert de choix du monde. De l'acier vert, de l'aluminium vert, des batteries vertes, des semi-conducteurs verts. Et, et ça, ça donne des dividendes. Vous avez peut-être vu aussi que BMW a annoncé que tous les véhicules fabriqués en Amérique du Nord vont maintenant prendre l'aluminium qui est fait au Saguenay, au Québec. Alors, moi, j'ai dit, on est sur la bonne voie. 
euh, on voit les dividendes et c'est plus maintenant, on ne parle plus pourquoi le Canada, mais on dit comment et quand. Et pour moi, c'est ça qui me fait grand plaisir et qui garde l'énergie euh, pour avancer ensemble. Bien, merci, Monsieur euh, le ministre. Maintenant, avant que, que vous nous quittez, il va falloir que vous envoyez un message pour les gens de euh, Saint-Maurice-Champlain qui nous regardent maintenant. Bien, écoutez, les gens de Saint-Maurice-Champlain, je vous aime. Merci de m'avoir donné l'opportunité d'être avec vous depuis euh, 2015. Euh, Aujourd'hui, c'est un grand moment pour la famille libérale. Je suis avec vous de cœur. Je suis ici et je peux vous dire qu'on va continuer de travailler ensemble pour euh, bien des années. Mais vraiment, euh, toute la Mauricie aussi est devenue un peu le cœur de cette vallée de l'énergie verte. Alors, dans cette nouvelle économie, on gagne et puis on va gagner ensemble. Merci tout le monde. Merci, Francis. Et n'oubliez pas, demain, euh, vous allez vous asseoir avec euh, le gars du de Shawinigan, mais vous êtes le vrai petit gars de Shawinigan. Vous êtes la personne qui va chercher les emplois partout à travers le monde et vous les amener au Canada. On va avoir la chance d'avoir M. Chrétien et M. Champagne demain à 6 h euh, p.m. Donc, n'oubliez pas de nous regarder à 6 h p.m. François-Philippe et Jean Chrétien demain. Merci, Merci tout le monde. Merci. Je vous souhaite une très bonne soirée. Merci à vous deux. Vous êtes exceptionnels. Merci, mon ami. Merci. Uh, donc, on continue. We are continuing to welcome our next guest. And uh, as I said earlier, we had some of our co-chairs who were not able to join us, but they're now here. And I'm sure you can hear all the energy building in the room and you can see people starting to trickle in. We're very excited. On est vraiment excité. On va maintenant inviter notre co-chair, Jesse McCarmon, who's coming on. Yep. Jesse, come on, come on up. One of our first Indigenous co-chairs for, uh, for this convention. Hi, Jesse. Hello. I am so excited to see you again. I want to say, when Jesse ran in 2019, I campaigned for him. So I am so excited to see him back. Jesse, we'll let you introduce yourself. Bonjour, Kinoua. Jesse McCormick, Nishnagaz. Deshkan Zibing Monjaba. My name is Jesse McCormick. Je suis Jesse McCormick. I'm from Chippewas of the Thames First Nation. I'm the incoming co-chair for the Indigenous Peoples Commission. And very happy to be here with liberals from across the country for this exciting event. Jesse, tell us how uh, this morning went. Uh, it was a big day for you, um, and you're the incoming president for the Indigenous Commission. What was that like? How are you feeling? What are you hearing from the communities, and what's the energy like? I feel enthusiasm, and I don't mean me. I feel enthusiasm from the people in the party, but especially the people in the Indigenous Peoples Commission. Uh, there's a lot of people really dedicated to doing the work of ensuring that our party reflects the values and interests of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples in Canada. And we were very pleased that the, uh, the Right Honourable Tr Justin Trudeau took the time to come and join us for part of our discussions today. So we were really happy to, uh, to have the leader of the party in our commission and helping to, to, to advance some of the things we were working to advance. So it's been great. Alors bien sûr, pour nos amis francophones qui nous regardent, Jesse McCormick uh, sera le prochain président de la Commission sur les peuples autochtones. Nous avons un caucus uh, au sein du Parti libéral, au sein du caucus libéral mené par Jaime Baptiste. Et je crois que, uh, Jesse, you're going to play a huge role in terms of informing policy that makes sense for uh, Indigenous communities across Canada. And, and how do you see this big step? Well, C'est incroyablement important pour tout le monde d'avoir le, le voix des peuples autochtones um, uh, parmi le, le Parti libéral. Et on doit travailler fort pour, pour avoir la voix, pour avoir la confiance des peuples autochtones du Canada. Et on va faire le travail, on va, on va le faire. Alors, Jesse sera extrêmement occupé. Merci beaucoup de, de votre service au sein du parti, d'avoir de, 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 la chance de, de communiquer avec tous les membres et surtout les voix qui sont parfois oubliées. Et euh, c'est important d'amener ces voix-là, euh, comme les peuples autochtones, partout à travers le Canada. Je vous remercie beaucoup pour votre travail et je suis certain qu'on va avoir une chance d'avoir euh, plusieurs euh, occasions en fin de semaine avec moi et Ariel et Adam, d'avoir euh, de bonnes conversations euh, plus tard euh, ce soir et demain et samedi. Ah, merci à vous. Thank à vous you. Et merci encore pour yes. tout ce que tu as fait en, à 2019. C'était excellent. OK, thank you, everyone. Thank you. OK, Good so uh, now we're going to go to watch some of the interviews, uh, interview packages that we uh, recorded earlier. I had an opportunity to chat with a lot of young people, a lot of excited members who are coming into the convention today. Let's hear from them right now. Is this your first convention? Yes, it's my first convention. Are you excited? Very, very excited. What are you most excited about? I'm excited about Justin Trudeau's opening speech. It's so exciting. It's really like exciting to be in a big group of people. There's all kinds of people from like all ages, all walks of life, all places in the country. So it's just cool to be around so many different people. Tu as un message pour les jeunes qui nous regardent maintenant, qu'est-ce que tu as à dire? 
Euh, je dirais impliquez-vous, c'est le plus important. Puis euh, je pense qu'un des sujets qu'il faut parler de plus en plus, c'est les changements climatiques. Donc euh, informez-vous, éduquez-vous, puis engagez-vous. C'est le parti pour les changements climatiques. So we're here with Melanie. Melanie, tell me what you're seeing, what you're hearing, how are you feeling? I'm very excited to be here, and it was my first time meeting with the Indigenous Peoples Commission, so I really enjoyed that today, and it was wonderful to see the ministers there, and, um, and our Prime Minister even popped in, so that was quite exciting. What message do you have from folks from your area, your community, that are watching right now? Protection of Indigenous rights is the protection for the future of all of us. And when we protect land and water for Indigenous uses, then we know that we're going to have a future that's secure for all of our, our future generations. And, and that's really important to me. Wow, we're just really excited to be here and come together again. It's been a few years, we've done it virtually, so seeing people again and all these fine liberals that are out there, it is wonderful. I have to echo what Lisa said. It's been amazing to see fellow liberals. It's been incredible to get together after three years not being together. The PM was just through that through, came by and said hi to everyone. The energy is up. I was upstairs at the volunteer hub, Team Trudeau. People are so excited and I'm just really thrilled to be here with the people that really make it happen. This is my first convention and I'm excited for the Young Liberals Pub Night, getting to meet a lot of people like like-minded. And then Hillary Clinton, honestly. Oui, des politiques en fait qu'on a à offrir. Les jeunes libéraux ont été reconnus dans le passé pour toujours faire avancer le parti. Euh, je pense au mariage entre conjoints de même sexe ou encore la légalisation du cannabis. Donc, euh, c'est vraiment des politiques qui m'intéressent ici et évidemment rencontrer euh, des membres du Parlement comme vous. Really looking forward to the speech with Minister Freeland and Hillary Clinton. I think it's going to be so amazing to see two powerful women on stage together. If you could say one thing that you're most excited about this weekend, what would you say? Probably reigniting the flame, um, especially in our area. Um, there are, we're rebuilding our um, young liberals as well as our liberal party in uh, the Bay of Quinte area. And uh, the one thing that we're most excited with is to connect with um, other parts of Canada and understand what's working and how do we bring out the vote and bring out the volunteers in our area. Is this your first convention? Actually, it's my third time being here. <laughs> Another veteran. Okay, good, good. This is good. So tell us why it's important for young people to be at the convention today, even the ones that are watching li us live right now. Um, so I think it's important that young people just generally get involved in politics. Um, we are the future of this country, so it's better to get now involved now than it is to, later down into the road and uh, speak up about things that we're passionate about, whether that's women's rights or the climate change or the economy and whatnot. So. And so, since it's your third time, what do you feel like the energy is like right now versus all the other times that you've been at the convention? I think it's definitely immaculate. Um, we're meeting each other after like who knows how long because of pandemic. So the energy I think is electrifying. I'm so it's so great to meet a lot of my friends that I haven't seen over the last two years, and it's been great to connect with everybody. So what are you looking to see the most tonight or in the entire convention? I'm really excited for the keynote speakers, uh, especially our Prime Minister. I'm super excited to attend that and then all the after parties that are going to be super fun to attend. After well. parties! After parties, yeah. <laughs> if you were to send a message home where you're from, actually where are you from? Milton. Milton. Yeah. So if you were to send a message to the viewers from Milton right now that are watching us, what would you think? Um, definitely come to the next convention if you can because it's an amazing opportunity to just network with people and obviously meet a bunch of cool people like Ariel obviously and I think it's just a great opportunity to learn more about the current policies that we're engaging with and that are affecting all of us today. And we're back live again here in the convention, the 2023. If you're still watching with us, don't forget to hashtag Lib2023. And we're now uh, going to be able to have a conversation with Susan, Suzanne Cohen, who is our past, our, our exiting president for the Liberal Party. Alors, bienvenue encore à nos écouteurs et aux auditrices et auditeurs qui nous écoutent ce soir. Évidemment, lorsque vous avez des, 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 des commentaires sur Twitter, vous avez des conversations avec nos libéraux, nos collègues, hashtag Lib2023. Évidemment, on va avoir une conversation avec euh, la présidente qui, de, du Parti libéral, notre chère Susan Cowan. Et je pense que Ariel, c'est le temps de l'inviter euh, oui, sur oui. l'estrade. Le, Absolument. Susan, welcome. Alors, Susan, euh, bienvenue. Ah, merci. Bienvenue. Hi, 
Hello, you look lovely. How are you? How are you feeling? Oh, I'm really excited to be here. It's such a fantastic uh, evening that we're in for and weekend. It's been so long since we were here all together, 2018, in my hometown of Halifax. So it's really great to be back, to get the energy. And, you know, we're really just getting going. We have tonight, which is going to be fantastic with the Prime Minister. And uh, and then, you know, amazing speakers over the course of the weekend. So And, and really a chance to connect and, and have conversations again in person. Alors, Suzanne, évidemment, vous avez eu la chance d'avoir euh, deux élections. Je ne sais pas si c'est la chance ou le malheur, mais vous avez évidemment euh, mené le parti à travers deux élections. Euh, on souvent vous amène, on vous appelle euh, la chef euh, des, des bénévoles. Vous vous nommez comme ça. Euh, pour vous, le bénévolat au sein du Parti libéral, comment c'est important? Uh, c'est vraiment, moi je, moi je dis, c'est d'être bénévole uh, dans notre parti. Les bénévoles sont vraiment le cœur de notre mouvement. C'est mm -hmm. le cœur de notre parti. On a une, une équipe uh, à, à, au parti qui est petite, ils travaillent très fort. Mais notre succès et le progrès et les trois élections qu'on a gagnées à uh, Libéral, c'est vraiment uh, à cause uh, des, 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 des centaines et des, des, des milliers de bénévoles tout à travers le pays qui travaillent si fort. Et, et bien sûr, euh, l'accès, euh, on soit qu'on parle de l'allocation canadienne pour enfants, qui est tellement important pour les mères et les parents partout à travers le Canada. Euh, deux élections, comment ce message a été important pour les familles partout à travers le Canada? Euh, moi, j'ai fait tant de porte-à-porte que des appels pendant les dernières cinq ans. Et, et, et c'est les histoires que j'entends à la porte ou sur le téléphone des gens qui disent « C'était vraiment l'allocation qui m'a aidé de, de rester à la maison ou d'avoir assez d'argent pour euh, mes enfants, pour la nourriture, pour les activités, pour juste vraiment avoir la sécurité que d'avoir un, un, un peu d'aide. » Et, 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 et les, 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 il y a tant de choses. Ça. Et mais aussi euh, de tant d'enfants qui étaient euh, élevés euh, de, ou euh, sous, sous, la, pauvreté, la pauvreté, exactement, la pauvreté. bien sûr. Et c'est vraiment. Et, et j'aime chaque conversation. Il y a. Et maintenant, on doit faire la prochaine chose. Alors, c'est notre agenda, notre progrès. On ne peut pas juste rester ici. On doit continuer. Et ça, c'est le si important d'avoir des congrès comme ça, de en, continuer d'entraîner et traîner nos bénévoles pour qu'on pourrait gagner la prochaine élection aussi. Avec vous deux. Yeah, so, um, Susan, I want to ask you a question. Uh, you've been president for the last five years. Two mandates. Um, what are you most proud of? I am most proud of the fact that we have been able to come together as a party, come together as tens of thousands of volunteers across the country and bring two successful liberal governments uh, in very challenging times. But I think one of the things that I think back of the last five years was, you know, the pandemic. I mean, it was just huge. It's, it's weighed on everyone. It's impacted everybody across the country. We as a party, there is no playbook for how to, you know, train volunteers and how to keep a party engaged and active when everybody has to stay home and you can't get together. So one of the things I'm most proud of is the fact that our amazing volunteers and our amazing staff really pivoted so quickly and our volunteers embraced all this new technology and we're continuing to use that now. So people came together, they embraced new technology, we were able to keep connecting with Canadians and that is why we had the success we did in 2021. And you said that you, you call yourself the chief volunteer, which I want to say it's true. <laughs> Susan, you've campaigned for almost every candidate in our party. Um, what gives you the energy to do that? The people do. I mean, our party does. Our, uh, the, the, every time I go out canvassing, I'm with an amazing group of people from a different part of the country. And the energy that they have, that fuels me. And so that's why it's so nice for us all to be able to be here together, to get energy of one another. I mean, I'm a people person. I think that comes across pretty well to all of us. Um, and I get my energy from our party and from the people in our party. So we're electing a new president uh, very soon this weekend. What message do you have for the new president of this party? You know, uh, I think one of the things I would say is that it's a busy, it's a busy position, but it's such an incredible opportunity. It really is a once in a lifetime thing to take on a role like this. So enjoy yourself, embrace it. Um, and, 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 and if you're having a day that really, you know, maybe is a little bit tough than the other, pick up the phone, make a couple of calls and the things that you hear back and the responses, you really will feel, even if you're home, you'll feel part of a community, our big liberal family.
Alors, Suzanne, évidemment, euh, vous, euh, vous terminez votre mandat comme présidente. Euh, je le sais que je vais vous demander euh, quels conseils que vous avez à donner au prochain ou à la prochaine présidente du, du Parti libéral. Mais une chose que j'ai retenue de votre présidence, c'est que vous avez traité les bénévoles avec, euh, avec ardeur. Vous les avez traités, euh, je me souviens encore, j'avais un bénévole qui s'est fait mordu par un chien, malheureusement. Et vous y avez téléphoné pendant la campagne électorale. Et ça, pour moi, ça voulait tout dire. Quand on vous appelle la chef des bénévoles, vous avez vraiment traité tous les bénévoles à travers le Parti libéral. Donc, quel avis vous avez à donner au prochain, euh, au pro à la prochaine présidente ou la, au prochain président? Oh, euh, C'est vraiment, oui, je, je me rappelle de ça. Et puis, euh, il y avait quelques journées, on, il était sur une téléconférence oui. et euh, il a la chance de demander une question. Mais pour moi, c'est vraiment de, de prendre euh, du temps pour euh, euh, avoir des conversations, avoir l'opportunité de, de parler avec nos bénévoles. Oui. Je, tu, il y a tant d'énergie que je reçois de ça. Même si la journée, c'est un peu fatigué, il y a pleut, ça pleuvoir ou quelque chose comme ça. Juste prenez la chance de prendre quelques minutes, être vraiment, je suis ici, c'est un grand honneur, un privilège d'avoir cette position et, euh, et ça, ça, ça passe très vite. Oui. Ça, moi, c'est cinq ans et je, je, ça passe très vite. Alors, euh, avoir des conversations, avoir la chance pour vraiment dire euh, merci à, à tout le monde et tous les bénévoles qui vous aident. Mais c'est à nous à vous dire merci beaucoup pour votre service au Parti libéral et votre service aux Canadiens en général. Maintenant, nous allons voir, euh, visionner une vidéo de Mme Sophie Grégoire Trudeau. Mais juste avant, je vous laisse Mme Ariel juste vous dire ça en anglais. And so, thank you so much, Susan, for chatting with us. Uh, thank you for all the work that you've done for the last five years. Uh, on behalf of the entire caucus, we're so grateful for you. On behalf of the Liberal Party and all the volunteers that you've supported, we're so grateful for you. So thank you so much for joining us. And now we're going to go back to our live and watch uh, Sophie Trudeau, Grégoire Trudeau uh, for the next part of this uh, live. Hello, my friends. Bonjour, mes amis. Here you are, reunited, ready for action because you believe in the power of coming together to create progress. Ça me touche énormément de vous savoir que vous êtes toutes et toutes ici parce que vous, le Parti libéral, vous créez un avenir meilleur pour tous vos concitoyens. And one of the many lessons we learned from the COVID-19 pandemic is that we have the ability to stay connected even when we're apart. So even though we couldn't be together in Ottawa for the in-person convention, I want to thank you for joining us virtually and continuing to support our progress to move this country, Canada, forward. Not just for people who belong to our party, but for everyone. You know, as a mental health advocate, I reached out to isolated families during the pandemic, mostly single mothers. And I'm very aware of just how challenging the past years have been on your well-being and all of your loved ones. I wanted to reach out to all of you to make sure that you know how grateful I feel towards all those who have worked so hard in the past years and months to make it where we are today. And I want to thank Suzanne Cowan for her outstanding leadership and service to the Liberal Party of Canada as our president. Suzanne, comme présidente de notre parti, tu as été euh, défenseur des bénévoles libéraux et sous ton leadership, on a obtenu deux autres mandats, des Canadiennes et Canadiens, et on a continué à faire grandir le mouvement libéral d'un océan à l'autre. Merci, cher ami. Merci beaucoup. To your leader and a man who I see working tirelessly, Justin, thank you for your dedicated vision to building a better Canada, all while being a loving dad to our three amazing children. We started this crazy journey all together 10 years ago last month when you became the leader of this party. Et depuis, toi et ton équipe, partout à travers le pays, vous avez gagné des élections, vous avez fait face à des défis mondiaux très difficiles, et ça a été une décennie de travail acharné, des nuits blanches, des longues tournées dans l'autobus de campagne pour rencontrer encore plus de Canadiennes et de Canadiens. Mais ensemble, vous avez gardé le cap sur ce qui compte enseigner la gentillesse et la bienveillance à nos enfants, soutenir les familles canadiennes coûte que coûte et bâtir un Canada à l'esprit tellement rassembleur. Merci pour tout, Justin, et bien sûr, merci à tous les bénévoles. We wouldn't be right here today without the help of supporters and volunteers from across this country. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You have been there since the beginning of our journey. I still remember selling membership cards in the parking lot 
uh, at a grocery store in Montreal with devoted volunteers. You are the ones at the heart of this movement to deliver real positive change for Canadians. And together, you're doing all just that. Delivering $10 a day childcare for families, lifting more than 400,000 Canadians out of poverty with the Canada Child Benefit, taking strong climate action to build a cleaner future for our kids and grandkids, supporting our parents and seniors across the country. On veille à la sécurité des rues euh, et la sécurité de nos enfants. On assure le bien-être, la sécurité et la santé des gens pendant une pandémie mondiale. Et la liste continue. Et tous ces progrès-là, on les doit à des Canadiennes et à des Canadiens comme vous. Des gens qui proposent de nous aider à travers tout ça comme bénévoles, qui passent des week-ends à faire des appels téléphoniques, qui font du porte-à-porte, -porte, beau temps, mauvais temps, on le sait, et qui font des dons à la hauteur de leurs moyens, de vos moyens, pour contribuer à faire grandir notre mouvement. Grâce à vous, ce mouvement, ce parti, n'a jamais été aussi fort. We've made tens of millions of knocks and calls, and good news, fundraising is really strong and growing, and this year, the party is continuing to engage more volunteers than ever before. It is your hope and your hard work that is building this movement, and I couldn't be more grateful for all that you've done. I'm sure you'll continue to work with this spirit of deep solidarity, and when one stays true to their values and vision, there's nothing they can't achieve. So let's remember that whether close or far, we are all allies. No matter our life choices or who we choose to love, uh, we are all neighbors when it comes to building justice and moving every single community in Canada forward for everyone. Merci, mes amis. Thank you, dear friends. And we're back live, and the excitement is real, guys. I wish you could see all the people that are filling up the room right now. And if you're still with us watching from home, I hope you're still using the hashtag Lib2023, hashtag Lib2023. Ariel euh, fait toujours un bon job à rappeler aux gens qui nous écoutent. N'oubliez pas, quand vous avez des conversations en ligne, utilisez le hashtag Lib2023. Et je pense que nous avons le secrétaire parlementaire au ministre de la Justice, notre cher collègue Gary Anansi Gary, qui va nous joindre euh, ce soir sur le plateau ou juste en, avant le, le discours. So Gary, join us, come on, Gary. Come Gary Anansi from Scarborough Rouge Park is joining us. Gary, how are you feeling? I'm great. This is a fantastic convention. It feels like old days, but with so many people here, it is so exciting. Over 4,000 people. The lineups are already starting to form. Uh, so this is exciting. I think we're going to have a great convention. Alors, je vais traduire pour Gary parce que je le sais qu'il pratique son français, mais euh, son français encore, euh, il est encore en train de pratiquer. Gary est excité d'être ici ce soir. Il va avoir euh, 4000, euh, 4000 libéraux avec qui il va pouvoir avoir des échanges. Et euh, il a très hâte d'entendre le discours du premier ministre. Uh, Ariel, go ahead. And Gary, um, I, I like to call you the chief of volunteers. Gary has really fed us with young liberals young people within our party. What message do you have for all the young people who are watching us tonight? I think I just the three of us here, uh, I'm a bit older than both of them, but <laughs> I think I, I, we all started as young liberals. Um, we get got here because of, of the experience we gain as young liberals, the network, the friendships. There are people here that go back 35 years for us, uh, and, and I think for, for both of you as well. Um, this, is an, this is a family. This is not, uh, you know, you're not a stranger here. This is a family, we are a family that is continuously growing, continuously challenging ourselves, but also challenging Canadians to uh, build a more progressive, more just society. Alors Gary euh, est très fier d'être ici, évidemment, euh, il se dit euh, jeune libéraux de cœur, mais un peu plus vieux que nous. Mais je vais le remarquer, j'ai plus de cheveux gris que lui, par exemple, alors j'ai besoin de sa recette. Mais Gary trouve que c'est important de, que les libéraux continuent à se, à se mettre des défis en place. Et bien sûr, ce qu'on a accompli depuis sept ans, c'est important. Mais je pense que Gary semble dire qu'il faut continuer. Et je me souviens toujours de, des mots que Paul Martin nous a dit euh, il y a plusieurs années, quand moi j'étais encore jeune libéraux. Les jeunes libéraux, c'est les gens qui... Euh, qui, 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 qui brasse le bateau. Young liberals have always been the folks that rock the boat. And that's the words of Paul Martin 10 years, over 15 years ago that I heard. Ariel, go ahead. So Gary, before yeah. you leave us, um, if you have a message for people from your riding that are watching us, what would you say? 
Well, I, I know my, my president of my writing association, Ms. Letna Allen Rowe, uh, she's not able to join us here. She is uh, uh, being taken care of at home. Uh, so I miss you, Letna. I know you would have been the life of this party, uh, and I know you would have jumped up when the PM came to speak. But to everyone else watching from Scarborough Rouge Park and around the country, uh, we wish you were here. But you're here in spirit. We're here representing you. We're here representing your voice. Uh, and this is going to be such a monumental event that we're going to remember for many Many years to come. Alors, Gary se désole que sa présidente de, de, de son parti électoral à Scarborough Rouge ne peut pas être ici, Letna, et, et qui, qui souhaiterait qu'elle soit ici. Par contre, elle ne peut pas être ici. Mais Gary dit très clairement que c'est important que tous les libéraux qui auraient voulu être ici avec nous, vous êtes quand même en ligne, vous pouvez participer. N'oubliez pas, Ariel va me, va me le rappeler, hashtag Lib 2023, c'est possible de participer à la conversation, même si vous n'êtes pas ici en personne. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Gary, thank for you. joining us. And, uh, you know, as you heard it from Gary, uh, he just yeah. mentioned about us being young. But I just want to say that earlier, uh, someone took a shot at uh, the millennials that are 30. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that up. But we'll move on. Uh, up next, we're going to be chatting with uh, our Minister of International Development and Pacific Canada, Economic Pacific Canada, Minister Sajjant. Uh, he's going to be joining us to chat a little bit more. Uh, Francis, uh, répète en français. Oui, absolument. Uh, Ariel nous dit évidemment qu'on aura la chance d'avoir de, de, une conversation avec le ministre responsable des affaires uh, du développement international, le ministre, l'honorable Harjit Sajjan, avec qui uh, il est juste ici en ce welcome, moment. Welcome Harjit, Minister. welcome aboard. Yeah, it's good to see you. Minister, uh, how are you feeling tonight? Oh my God, it's so exciting to be here with a wider liberal family. I, I, from the time that I walked in, I've been talking to talking to people all the way through how excited they are, and especially more importantly, the younger generation that's here. I've met from Guelph. Saskatoon, Regina, New Brunswick. It's amazing to hear their, uh, their excitement. Minister, can I tell you something? Um, I, I'm going to take a shot at the minister right now because <laughs> when I first, when he first ran in 2015, minister had less gray hair. And he's got that's more gray accurate. hair that's than accurate. before. That's accurate. And I, we, had, we spoke to a lot of young liberals today, and one of them said uh, something, you know, around uh, voting for younger people, making sure that the 30-year-olds are not making decisions. I was like, wait, that's me. That's <laughs> yeah, no. me. Yeah, I, I yeah, know yeah. you like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Any message for the young people? No, no, right it's just well, welcome to our world, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, no, one of the things I said, I mean, I, I got to meet a number of uh, the young folks, and, and you know, they, t they talk about what we can do and, you know, um, how to get involved in politics and what. I always tell them one thing: focus on the why. Why do you want to do this? You know, for your for your, uh, for your community, uh, for your future, and that's I think what the liberals have always done is because we care about serving people, we want to make sure that we want to have an impact for them. So the how almost comes uh, automatic. So it's important for for us to succeed, gain the experience, but get involved because you don't want 30 year olds making decisions for your future. Okay. <laughs> Alors, si je peux faire un, une, juste une récapitulation, pourquoi le ministre est, est ici, évidemment, un ministre du Développement international, et, euh, et Ariel lui lançait une coupe de, de flèche en disant que sa barbe est devenue un peu plus grise. Euh, mais le ministre a rencontré des jeunes libéraux partout à travers le Canada, de Saskatchewan, d'Alberta, de la Colombie-Britannique. Et le ministre est engagé avec la jeunesse partout. Et il dit... Si les jeunes veulent s'impliquer, n'oubliez pas le pourquoi, et c'est pour ça que le pourquoi est tellement important. Minister, um, so how the, how the heck did you get involved in politics? The same thing. Uh, it's funny, it's funny story. I, so I actually not only grew up in my writing, I was a police officer in my writing. So when, you know, my time, served in policing, served in the military, but I wanted to give back. And I felt that it needed it needed a stronger voice. We weren't getting the same level of support. I used to see that when I was a police officer. Like, you know, we knock on a lot of doors as politicians. I've knocked on a lot of doors as a police officer, right? The only difference was they couldn't say no when I was a police officer. But more importantly, I got to see the challenges in the community. But when you have somebody that has a voice for your community, you're able to do more things. That's why I got involved. I was lucky um, that I got didn't you know, made the right choices, but some people didn't. I wanted to make sure that we could give a better opportunity for the young, younger generations. That's why I got involved, and uh, I'm so, so privileged to, to be now in this role. 
Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Ministre. Merci beaucoup, so Ministre, pour nous rejoindre. Ça va être divertissant, nous sommes excités. Donc maintenant, ça sonne... Je viens de sounds... travailler, par exemple. Je vais demain, je vais me dresser pour des clothes plus BC, OK? Oui, <laughs> right. il va right, essayer de okay. se sentir bien demain pour me rejoindre. Merci beaucoup. C'est cool, OK, c'est right. OK. Maintenant, ça sonne que nous allons commencer bientôt, mais avant que nous allons à l'événement event, uh, Francis, entre vous et moi, comment vous êtes sentez How are you excited? Do you want to give a shout out to anyone you want to shout out mom? Hi mom if you're watching. Anybody you want to say hi to right well, now? Well, absolutely. I want to thank um, Len Hines and Marjorie Hines who have been involved in politics for their entire lives. And I know they're going to be here tomorrow at 7.30 because it's so important for them to be involved in the policy discussion. And Len and Marjorie were involved in politics even when we're in opposition, making sure that the writing I have the opportunity to represent was they were still continuing those conversations with liberals out there. So Marge and Len, thank you so much. And obviously, je vais dire un bonjour à ma conjointe Kate et uh, mon, mon enfant Léo qui dort uh, probablement déjà. Okay, before we go <laughs> off, I also want to give a shout out to London West, the EDA, the, the board of, of uh, lots of people, Zoe, uh, Flora, who's amazing, Trudy, Ben, everybody who couldn't make it today, we're thinking of you, we're celebrating on your behalf. And uh, this is a big family, as uh, Gary said earlier, we want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and that we're enjoying ourselves, but that we're taking policies that are serious for our party and for the next uh, election as well, uh, Francis. I don't know if you want to talk about what we think the next election is going to look like. I mean, we got to make sure, you know, they said, Millennials and Gen Z. I saw a lot of Gen Zers today here, uh, and we want to make sure that those people feel included in our party, feel included in our liberal family. Uh, you know, anything you want to add on that? Absolutely. Moi-même, étant jeune libéral, je me suis impliqué tant quand la question des euh, du mariage euh, du même sexe était tellement important il y a au-delà de 20, ben, 20 ans déjà. Et, et je pense que c'est ça que le Parti libéral a toujours été sa force, toujours été de s'assurer que tout le monde peu importe votre origine, peu importe votre âge, qu'il y ait une place pour les jeunes au sein du Parti libéral. Et c'est pour ça que l'âge de 14 ans, vous pouvez vous impliquer tout de suite et maintenant. Et, euh, et pour moi-même et pour tous les jeunes qui sont là, Ariel et moi, euh, on est encore jeunes, j'ose le croire. <rire> and if you're still watching uh, with us right now, please don't forget to text to donate uh, 54222 or go to our website liberal.ca and uh, join our social media if you're joining watching from Twitter uh, YouTube Instagram whatever social media platform you're using don't forget to hashtag lib2023 Alors pour ceux et celles qui nous regardent évidemment si vous voulez continuer la conversation en ligne n'oubliez pas hashtag lib2023 et vous pouvez toujours faire des dons à 54 deux, deux, deux. Merci beaucoup we'll et bon show. Vous avez commencé ce mouvement. Regardez autour de vous. Vous avez déjà... Vous 
vous avez commencé ce mouvement, regardez autour de vous. Vous avez déjà marqué l'histoire, mais nos plus grands défis restent toujours devant nous. Êtes-vous prêts? Pierre E. Trudeau, 1, 2, 3. Canada must be unified. Canada must be one. Canada must be progressive. And Canada must be a just society. We Liberals can say proudly, we have always formed the coalitions that banded Canadians together. And when tomorrow is over, we will emerge as we always have, a united party, a party renewed. You know, the Canadian dream is not complete. We have a lot of work to do. Thank you. We have to assure that the role of Canada in the world is one of the influence and of fierté. We have to build an economy of the 21st century. We have to reinforce the foundations of social society. With your help, we will get the job done, and we'll do it the same way we've done it all along, with hope and hard work. Merci beaucoup, mes amis. I'm so proud to be here today, proud to be liberal. <laughs> Attention! Maintenant, c'est la grande phrase, hein? Vous savez, on peut maintenant déclarer officiellement ouvert le Congrès national libéral 2023! J'aimerais remercier toutes les personnes qui se sont jointes à nous ici, aujourd'hui, et pour les trois prochains jours, à l'occasion de notre grande cérémonie d'ouverture, je me présente, Stéphane Lauzon, et j'ai le privilège et un honneur pour moi d'être le coprésident de ce congrès. Mais je suis accompagné de deux merveilleux coprésidents et coprésidentes aujourd'hui. Donc, je vous présente, coprésidente de ce congrès, Jenna Sott. And I also present my new friend, my new colleague, Jesse McCormack. Avant de céder la parole, j'aimerais remercier le Comité national et qui nous ont permis de vivre ces moments. Donc, merci pour votre confiance et bon congrès! Good evening, everyone. It's hard to beat this, right? The energy, the energy. We have an absolutely amazing program for you over the next three days. And we are so thrilled that you are all here tonight. Doesn't it just feel amazing, the energy in this room? And not to mention the many, many people who are joining us virtually as well. Thank you for joining us. So on behalf of myself, my co-chairs as well, thank you so much for being here. We are so excited for what the next three days has in store for all of us the discussions, the dialogue. Thank you for being here, and I hope you enjoy the Congress. Thank you.
Hello, hello all my relations. Miigwech for being here with us today in the unceded and traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe peoples. This is an exciting opportunity. We have liberals from across the country. We are gathered together. We are working towards a common purpose. And we are going to make change in Canada for the people of Canada right now. We've already just started with some great conversations and sessions. Whether you attended the safe convention discussions, Policy 101, or were able to participate in one of the commissions, we're starting to see the work happening. We're starting to see the discussions taking place and the collaboration that's going to build us towards the next election. I have the great pleasure of sharing the stage with Stefan and Jenna. And I want you to know that we are just getting started. There is so much waiting for us at this session and in these discussions, and we thank you all for being here today. Yeah. Maintenant, j'ai le plaisir d'inviter une personne spéciale que j'ai eu l'occasion de rencontrer, de rencontrer auparavant, Miss McLeod, à chanter notre hymne national. Je vous demande de vous lever à ce moment. Please stand for the singing of the national anthem. Our home and native land, true page for love in all of us command, car ton bras est fort et il s'est porté la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard Wasn't that amazing? Thank you so much. That was Miss McLeod, who is a 17-year-old from my riding of Kanata Carlton. <laughs> it is a distinct pleasure this evening, an honor for me to have the opportunity to welcome Elder Claudette Commanda. She is Algonquin Anishinaabe from Kitigan Zibi just up the way across from Manawaki. An alumni, an alumni of the University of Ottawa and the Faculty of Common Law and the Faculty of Arts, Claudette has dedicated the last 35 years promoting First Nations people, history, culture, and rights in various capacities. She is also the newly appointed Chancellor of Ottawa, the University of Ottawa. We tread lightly here in Anishinaabe, Algonquin territory, recognizing the original and continuing caretakers of this land. And we thank Elder Claudette for joining us today. Please join me in welcoming Elder Claudette Commanda. Not exactly the tallest person in the house. 
but maybe I'm, uh, every now and then I may have the loudest voice in the house. <laughs> but what a beautiful gathering. I just could feel the energy. Wasn't that a beautiful song by that young woman when she sang O Canada? That's so beautiful. Thank you. The energy, the energy, the spirit of people, the spirit of community is here, and I'm very proud to be here with you to bring forth a welcome and a blessing for your gathering. Bonjour à tous. Mon nom c'est Claudette Commander. Je suis une femme algonquin de la Première Nation de Catagan Zibi. Je suis très fière pour, pour être ici avec vous autres. I'm always honored and I'm always proud to bring forth greetings on behalf of the nation of the Algonquin people. Prime Minister Trudeau, Madame Sophie Gregoire, Honorable Ministers, Members of Parliament, and to you, the delegates, all of you, welcome. Miigwech kibi jayego ma non gome ne shnabe ki o mame wene niwag. Miigwech. Bevenu a tous, bevenu ici a la territoire non cede de la nation algonquin. My brothers and sisters, family and friends, on behalf of the Algonquin nation, we welcome you. We welcome you to this beautiful homeland of the Algonquin people. Thank you for being here. Miigwech. When we come together, we must always acknowledge one another. We must always live those responsibilities that were passed on to us from our ancestors. To welcome people into our homeland, brothers and sisters, no matter where they're from. I acknowledge the first ancestors of this land, the ancestors of my people, the Algonquins. I acknowledge the ancestors of indigenous peoples from coast to coast to coast in this beautiful country called Canada. I acknowledge each and every one of you, all of your ancestors, all of your ancestors. No matter where we come from, we all have ancestors. Let's never forget our ancestors. Our ancestors were always with us. They came before us. They continue to pray for us and to guide us. And the prayers that we give and the blessing that we share is always on the foundation of the spirit and intent of the love of the, of the creator and his blessings, as well as the the strength and the guidance of our ancestors. When we come together, not only do we welcome people into our territory, into our homeland, we acknowledge our ancestors, but we must always give a blessing to our visitors, to our families, and to our friends. And as you come together, the liberal community of Canada, you are a family. You are a family of hopes and dreams, of actions and results. You are leaders. You're a community of voices to ensure that today and tomorrow is a better for our children, all our children. <clears throat> for indeed, all children matter. For indeed, we come together in prayer to acknowledge Indigenous women. And we know that tomorrow marks the day of that national day for murdered and missing Indigenous women. But let us put our hearts, our mind, our spirit, and our voice together as one as we acknowledge Indigenous women and girls and their families. Let us give thanks to the Creator for His love, and we say, Chi mi gwech mi gwech go. Miigwech. Ni buk sendam gishimina do onje kakina non go mashishwa bang mashkao ize win. Ni baka win. Manajita wa win. Minupamads win. Ashish zagi e win. Creator, as I stand here before you and my ancestors, I humble myself before you and and all our grandmothers and grandfathers. And I ask Creator, with my voice and my love for all who are here, to bless the people who are gathered here today, 
to bless their national convention as they embark on this work for the next three days and beyond three days. Creator, continue to bless the leaders, continue to bless the delegates, continue to bless the communities with strength, with guidance, with wisdom, with knowledge, with respect. And together, Creator, with our one voice, one heart, one spirit, we thank you for the most precious gift that you have given us, love. And may we be the beacons of love, that we shine our kindness and our respect for one another, and we embark on this journey of healing together as brothers and sisters so that, that the days of today and tomorrow will be the best that Canada will offer for all our children because we love all children. Thank you for hearing this prayer and thank you, Creator, for the blessing that you will give to the Liberal, National Liberal Convention and to each and every one of you people who are here. Keep doing that good work. Put your minds and hearts together. And I love you all. I love you all. Thank you, Elder Commander. Merci beaucoup, Annie Claudette Commanda. Merci aussi à nos co-présidents du Congrès. It's now my pleasure to welcome to the stage the Member of Parliament for Brampton East, le député pour Brampton Est, Mani Sidou. Good evening, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Satriakal, namaskar, adav, salam alaikum, vanekam to everyone here in Ottawa. My name is Meninder Sidhu. I'm the Member of Parliament for Brampton East and also serve as the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the amazing Melanie Jolie. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces. Uh, so many new faces and so many faces with so much energy here in this room. I was just speaking to some colleagues backstage about our very first experiences at our very first conventions. Uh, and some word of advice, don't be shy, come up to us, ask us, tell us your story, ask us anything you want. We're here, I know I speak on behalf of all my liberal colleagues, the party itself, that we're open to having conversations, so don't be shy, come up to us. We are ready to have fun over the next three days. I want to give a shout out to the thousands of liberals that came across the country, including those that came from Brampton. I was out door knocking this past weekend on Sunday, and we had great conversations. We had conversations about the economy. We had conversations about technology and, of course, innovation. Innovation is at the heart of who we are as Canadians. So when it comes to building an economy that works for everyone, that's exactly the approach we have taken. We're investing in clean growth that not only helps fight climate change, but also creates well-paying jobs and good, clean jobs for Canadians. We're ensuring our businesses stay competitive while strengthening our supply chains. And I know that's especially important in cities like Brampton and other cities across the country. We're investing in clean technology and manufacturing, including in our auto sector. And most importantly, we're investing in workers. We're building a made in Canada solution that creates jobs and grows our economy and folks we're just getting started. I'm very excited to introduce the very first panel of the 2023 Liberal National Convention, Made in Canada, Innovation for Middle Class Jobs and a Cleaner Economy. 
And I'm even more excited to introduce some of our friends and ministers that will be joining us on stage tonight. Francois Philippe Champagne, Ener Francois Philippe Champagne's energy is matched by his passion in successfully selling the opportunities that Canada has to offer, including the recent news that Volkswagen would open its very first plant in North America. This plant will bring over 30,000 jobs for communities across this country. We have Christian Freeland, who has helped. Christia has, has been incredible in supporting and making real difference for Canadians, including $10 a day, childcare, and important services. She helped introduce our budget, and she's ushered in a plan that will make life more affordable and grow our economy. We have Minister Jonathan Wilkinson. Yeah. Jonathan has been a leader in the fight against climate change and recognizes the crucial role that innovation will play in our sustainable transition. Workers are at the heart of all of our decisions we make, and he remains focused in growing a clean, green, and sustainable economy. Sure. Last but not least, we have Minister Mary Ng. Entrepreneurs of all size help grow the economy, and no one knows this more than Minister Mary Ng, who has been focused on businesses, exports, and international trade. Whether around the world or right here in Canada, she is committed to finding practical solutions, made in Canada solutions, to ensure that our economy continues to grow. Let's give it up for Mary Ng. Our Liberal team is hard at work as we continue to build an economy that works for all Canadians, and I'm looking forward to tonight's panel. Thank you very much. Well, Manny, thank you so much for that incredible introduction, and bonsoir tout le monde. Hi, mon ami. Yeah. Now, it really is wonderful. Um, I'm going to be a bit of a moderator and uh, asking my colleagues uh, some questions. But know that we are the opening act. We're the opening act to the main act that you want to see after us, right? Yes! <laughs> So uh, I'm going to get going. Um, this is uh, an economic panel. We thought we would start with an economic panel because I think most people sort of say the following. It is about the economy, stupid. I agree. So, Krista, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Um, to kick off this discussion and let help us situate where we are today. The Canadian economy has been through some significant uh, twists and turns. And even over the last past, year, past three years, the economy has gone through those twists and turns, but so have Canadians. So why don't you kick us off and tell us what it's like for us today, what it's like for Canadians, um, what we're doing, what some of the challenges and opportunities are um, from where you sit. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mary. Um, thanks, everybody, for being here. You may be wondering why we are sitting down, kind of a low-energy thing, but, you know, Claudette, with her wonderful, wonderful blessing at the beginning, said she may not be the tallest person. I beg to differ. And this is kind of a vertically challenged panel. So I think, apart from Jonathan... <laughs> So I think that out of, in, in a merciful act, they decided they'd have us sitting down. But please know we are full of energy and full of excitement to be here. And I just want to start by saying, vraiment, ça me fait tellement, tellement grand plaisir de vous tous voir. Uh, un grand, grand merci que vous êtes ici. C'est vraiment important pour nous tous d'être ensemble, de parler ensemble, de travailler ensemble, parce que c'est grâce à vous, grâce à nous ensemble, 
que nous pouvons bâtir un meilleur Canada. Alors, merci beaucoup. I was thinking when we got here, why was I so excited and why were we all having so much fun? Obviously because it's a liberal convention, but it's an extra fun and important liberal convention because we haven't been together for a long time, right? 2018. Here, here. And I think we missed it and we missed each other. And the time between 2018 and now, you know, let's be honest, has been kind of tough, kind of traumatic for a lot of Canadians, right? We've had COVID, we had inflation, we had Russia's barbaric invasion of Ukraine, all these things together. No wonder people are feeling kind of bruised and beaten up. And that's one of the reasons that I am so grateful to all of you for knocking on doors in 2021 because it is our liberal government that is able to be compassionate right now. It is our liberal government that is gonna be delivering in just a few weeks a grocery rebate to 11 million Canadians who need it the most. That is liberal compassion, that is taking care of each other. Now, you guys may know I come from Northern Alberta originally. <laughs> yeah! And okay, the Albertans here and maybe others, you may know a few conservatives, okay? I do, I might be related to some of them. Um, and now one thing, so I'm gonna just start answering Mary's question to arm you for your conversations with your conservatives, conservative friends, neighbors, and family members, okay? Because you have to be ready. Now. Those conservative friends and neighbors and even family members will have been hearing from conservatives who are talking down the Canadian economy. Do not do that. Do not allow them to get away with that. Because last year, Canada had the strongest economic growth of any G7 country. The first quarter of this year with interest rates high, first quarter of this year, we are on track for 2.5% GDP growth. Yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. We have created 900,000 more jobs today than we had before COVID hit. That is 128% of the jobs we had before COVID compared to just 114% in the US. So jobs, the most important thing, Canada is there. And Meninder talked about childcare, okay? And you know, a lot of us in this room have fought for a long time for childcare and people said, oh, it's just a women's issue, it's just a social issue, it's just a liberal issue. You know what? Canada this year has the highest labor force participation rate for working age women in our history. We are at nearly 86% compared to 77% in the US. This is feminist economic policy in action and it's making a lot of families' lives a lot easier. Okay, and my last thing to tell you guys, this is for when you're talking to your conservative friends and neighbors and family members, you have to say to them, and our liberal government did all of that, and last month, huge, hugely happy moment for me, after the budget, Standard & Poor's, the ratings agency, reiterated Canada's triple A credit rating. Conservatives will not tell you that. I want you to tell them that, okay? Triple A. Now, this is good, but what we're gonna talk about on this panel is building for the future from this strong foundation. And, you know, President Biden was here not too long ago, close to where we're sitting, and 
standing in our House of Commons, he said, the world is at an inflection point. The kind of change that happens once in every five or six generations. He is totally right. This is a huge, huge moment. We are facing the existential challenge of climate change. And there is a fight in the world right now between democracy and dictatorship. These are two huge challenges. But you know what? On this geopolitical chessboard, there is no better place to be than Canada. We have every opportunity to turn these challenges into the best time in Canadian history. Because we have the resources under the ground, he's in charge of them. Because we have the resources above the ground, Francois Philippe and Mary are in charge of those. That is our people, that is our manufacturing, that is our businesses. We have the relationships with our democratic allies. Mary is in charge of those too. We are the only G7 country with a trade deal with every other G7 country. So we, yeah. So we have the stuff, we have the people, we have the relationships and the trust of the world's democracies. And what we're about to talk about, we have the liberal economic plan, a hundred billion dollar plan in the budget to build the clean economy of the 21st century. This is about great jobs for middle class people. And, you know, we all love that quote from great liberal leader, Wilfrid Laurier, that the 20th century of all the nations in the world, that was going to be the century for Canada. Now, it was a pretty good century for us. But I really think when I look at this inflection point, when I look at what Canada has, when I look at what we together know we can do and are doing for our country, it's going to be the 21st century that is Canada's century. So let's do it. Well, what a great start that is for a scene setter. And uh, if you haven't noticed in the tone, we're enthusiastic about this. Really, really enthusiastic. And, uh, and we really like working with each other and with all of you. So Christia just talked about the opportunity of Canada's opportunity into the future. And you often hear all of us, and you have been knocking on doors, talking about how the environment and the economy go hand in hand. So Jonathan, I'm coming to you next, and we're talking about climate action and how it really is an economic, an economic opportunity for the generation. Krishna talked about the guy responsible for the stuff that's under the ground. <laughs> so why don't, you tell, why don't you tell our liberal friends what you're up to? Thank you, uh, Mary. Um, bien sûr, nous devons faire face contre le changement climatique et nous devons réduire les émissions de gaz à effet de serre. But reducing emissions in and of itself is not sufficient. Um, if you talk to Canadians, about a quarter of Canadians think about this in the context of being willing to sacrifice in order to fight climate change. And there's probably 15 to 20 percent on the other side who either don't believe in climate change or don't think it's that important. But in the middle is the vast majority of Canadians who believe climate change is real, think it is important, but also want to understand that there is a future, an economic future, that will ensure that there are jobs and economic opportunities for their children. And that is entirely reasonable. Um, we need to be thinking about how we seize the economic opportunities that are associated with a transition to a much lower carbon future, which science tells us that we must. There's kind of two paths that Canada can go down. The first path essentially says, accepts the fact that climate science is a reality, which 99.9% .9 of scientists around the world would agree. And it says, how do we actually think about seizing those opportunities that will be available as we move towards new forms of energy generation, how we move towards new forms of materials that are going to be required? That is a plan for the future. The other pathway is essentially covering our eyes, either pretending that climate change doesn't exist or simply ignoring the reality of climate change, and essentially hoping for the best. You will not be surprised for me to say that that is the approach being taken by Mr. Paglia. Canada is in a uniquely beneficial position in this. 
Certainly there are opportunities that other countries have around the world. But Canada, if you got a chance to choose which country you were going to live in based on the economic prospects for the, for the country, it would be Canada first, probably Australia second for exactly the same reasons. We have critical minerals which are an enormous generational opportunity for this country that's not just about extracting more minerals, it's about processing and smelting them here in Canada, it's about building batteries like what uh, Volkswagen is going to be doing in this country, it's building electric vehicles and recycling those materials. We have the ability to provide hydrogen as an energy carrier to the world. We have biofuels, which can be an enabler for the agricultural community. We are a leader in a whole range of clean technologies. We have enormous renewable energy resources. Canada is uniquely well-placed. But in order to seize those, we need a plan. We need a plan that essentially focuses on how we actually incent deployment of technology, how we incent development of technology, how we ensure that we are making progress on emissions and on economic opportunity at the same time. We have been working on that now for almost eight years, and I would say that the budget represented a significant acceleration of that. It is about a clean industrial strategy for Canada, and I certainly have to thank Minister Freeland for, uh, for uh, the, the, the commitments that were made in that budget. I would say on the other side of this Yay. that On the other side of this, and I think this is something that is going to become evidently clear as we actually move towards the election, is that Mr. Polyev has no plan. I don't know whether he doesn't believe in climate change or he just doesn't think it's important, but he has no plan for addressing that, and he has no plan for an economic future. He talks in slogans. One of his slogans is, technology, not taxes. Well, I will tell you, I was a clean tech CEO before I got into politics. Technology is not a plan. Technology is a part of a broad climate plan. Technology, not taxes, is exactly the way Stephen Harper addressed climate change, and it failed. It failed because it is not a comprehensive plan that shows us how we take advantage of the opportunities as we actually reduce climate uh, carbon, carbon emissions. And so I would say that we are very excited about the potential for Canada. We are working very hard each and every day. And I honestly think that this nexus between climate and energy is going to be a focal point and a major decision point for Canadians in the next election. Oh, wow. A plan for the economy and the environment. How about that? Now, the plan needs investments. Now, Francois Philippe and the group of us, because of Mark Holland, have lately <laughs> been using this term, find your squirrel. Why do you use the term find your squirrel? He, gave us a, he told us a story about his dog and how happy his dog gets when he finds the squirrel. So it is about finding your inner squirrel. So Francois Philippe is... Um, I've been chasing a lot of squirrel these days. <laughs> well, well, you know what? what? You've been chasing and winning because it's actually about finding investments to invest in Canada. So Francois Philippe, talk about that. Yeah. Well, bonsoir tout le monde. J'espère que vous allez bien. Woo! Listen, folks, I, I miss you all. I wish I could have shaken all your hands before this session, but, you know, there was not enough time. But let's give a big round of applause. We have thousands of people gathered here and thousands at home. So let's give a big round of applause. We are the Liberal family. This is our family. This is where change starts. So this is a good moment. And, and you know, it's funny because Chris just said we're... We may not be the tallest, but God, do we speak, I must say, you know. But it's good, you know. When you're called champagne and you're the appetizer, it's kind of good, you know. The, you know, I, I heard that joke before. So it, it's good to be with all of you. And by the way, have you heard that we're going back to the moon? And some of the people have heard that, that Canada is going to be writing history. We're going to be back to the moon with our American friends. Uh, but listen, folks, it, it's a great moment. And... and Obviously, we've been talking about a, a number of things we've been doing. Uh, I think we've been winning. And for me, everything we've been doing with, with Jonathan, with Chris, with me, with the prime minister, for me, it's all about ambition. It's about possibilities. It's making sure that we seize the moment, that we're ambitious. That's what I've been trying to raise in Canada so that we're ambitious. Are we not as liberals? We are ambitious. We want to win. And when we think about winning, there's nothing more than Volkswagen that comes to mind because honestly, this was really our moment. You may have recalled that the conservative have let southwestern Ontario down. They let the town of St. Thomas down. They let 8,000 workers down. They let the auto sector down. We said, not under our watch. 
We're going to invest because we believe in Canada. Confident country invests in themselves. That's what we're going to be doing. And you know why we want Volkswagen? It's about the people. It's about you. It's about the talent. I keep saying that around the country. People that this is because we, we were there to put incentive. No, we won because Canada is a magnet for talent. And thanks to our immigration policy, everyone in the world recognized if you want to do business in the 21st century, Canada is the place to be. That's what we need to be proud of. The second thing that people have recognized, Mary, in Canada is that we have strong ecosystem, not only in biomanufacturing in Eastern Canada, not only in the aerospace sector in, in Quebec and in Montreal, not only in the auto sector that we have in, in Ontario, but also in biomanufacturing in Western Canada, in natural resources. People have realized that Canada has a strong ecosystem. The third thing that's attracted people, and that's Jonathan's work, is that we have the critical minerals to fuel the economy of the 21st century. Not only for batteries, but also for microchip. And I can tell you, when you talk to CEOs, global CEO on the role, it's all about proximity. Proximity to resources, proximity to assembly line, and proximity to market. The fourth thing that we've been doing is about renewable energy. The vision that the Prime Minister put together long time before the IRA is paying off dividend now. People recognize that if you want to green your supply chain, the place to be in the world is Canada. That's why we've been able to attract a number of investment. And the fifth is all about market. Yes, we can applaud because that's a big thing. You know, we have been, we saw the tide coming. As Christian has said, it's not about the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 15 years. This is about the next 50 years. And the last thing we had is access to market. I never talk about Canada as a country of 38 million people. I talk about a country that gives you preferential market access to 1.5 billion customers around the world. That is what Canada is in 2023. That's what we're winning in the world. And that's why I'm so confident that with you, we're going to be able to win in the economy of the 21st century. Because you know what? When you talk to global CEOs, and I remember I was with the global CEO of Volkswagen, Oliver, and, and he said, Minister, we're not here for the next five years. We're not here for the next 10 years. We're not here for the next 20 years. We're here for the next 100 years. This is about thousands of jobs we're in Canada. This is about building an auto sector for the 21st century. This is about us using our natural resources in a smart way. We're going to keep the value in this country. Thanks to what Krista has put in the budget, what Mary is doing, what uh, Jonathan has been doing, what we have been doing as liberal. We are putting Canada to win in the economy of the 21st century. And you know what? I cannot be more proud than being with all of you today because we're going to charter the future together. And I can tell you in the world where people have been saying, you know, I, I remember uh, when I was uh, pitching for Canada and Germany and making the case for Canada, the good thing is that it's no longer why, it's how and when Canada. So it's our moment to make sure that we work together in the next two days. Let's take the time to seize the moment. Let's be ambitious and let's make sure that we talk about Canada and that we win together for the economy of the 21st century. Now, the economy of the future, fighting climate change, all of us in this room, it is about people. It's about workers. And um, knocking on doors and listening to Canadians around the country and having this plan for the middle class, those working hard to join it. Do you remember that phrase, people? Yeah. The middle class and those working hard to join it. It's all about people. And uh, Krisha, can you talk to us about what this, what the economic plan means and what it means for workers in Canada? You talk a lot about jobs and that's part of it. And what about those jobs of the future for the people of Canada? I sure can, Mary. You know, I wish everyone who interviewed me was as nice as Mary is. Wouldn't that be fantastic? From the journalist, hmm. <laughs> yes, it would be wonderful. Okay, so look guys. Um, it's so, it is so energizing to be here and to be talking to everyone and thinking these things through together. I, you know, Mary, I want to start by saying, to answer that question by saying, look, you've heard us all 
talking about how Canada has that position on the geopolitical chessboard of the world. We are so lucky to be Canadian, and we have so many advantages for this inflection point that the world is in right now. But what I want to say to you also is, this is a use it or lose it moment. We have to seize this opportunity, and we need to work together and have a plan to do it. And I want to tell you just a little story. Think about the 20th century. And at the beginning of the 20th century, if people were saying, you know, this thought experiment that Jonathan said, you know, which are the countries best positioned? A lot of people would have said Canada and Argentina are neck and neck. We were very, very similar in terms of our economic potential, very similar in terms of immigration, very similar in terms of our natural resources, similar actually in terms of our GDP. No one would say that about Canada and Argentina today. And I say that because policy matters, government matters, the choices you make matter, and that's why the work every single person here does, the fact that you are here making policy, choosing government, figuring out what we're going to do, it matters so, so, so much. So we can seize this opportunity or we can be left behind. Now, the good news is we are already seizing this opportunity. Um, et c'est pourquoi je suis tellement, tellement optimiste quand on parle de l'économie canadienne et quand on parle des Canadiens et Canadiennes, quand on parle des travailleurs, quand on parle de nos enfants et de nos petits-enfants. We have a plan. Really, it's a plan that we started to put into action in 2015 as Canada embarked on a historic approach of pricing pollution as Canada made historic investments in our people. Investments, and investments in our people, by the way, are investments in the economy. Investments in the Canada Child Benefit, investments in early learning and childcare, investments in our students where we have increased the Canada Student Grant and permanently eliminated federal interest on Canada student loans. These are investments in our economy, yeah! And by the way, we are all talking about how we need to continue to support our young people. So stay tuned and interested in more ideas, guys. Um, so we have been doing this. And what is so exciting to me, as you know, Jonathan, Francois-Philippe, Mary, they mentioned the budget. I want you guys to know this was really a team effort. All of us, well, rolling up our metaphorical sleeves, I'm not wearing one right now, rolling up our metaphorical sleeves and really working together. And what I can tell you now is, you know, you see it in the investments Francois Philippe is attracting, but since the budget, we have seen TD do an economic analysis saying basically, business guys, you can't bitch anymore. Canada, I mean, that's not how they put it in their analysis. This was my translation. Um, but read it, you will see it as a faithful translation. Um, the conclusion was Canada is now level with the U.S. in its attractiveness as an investment destination in the clean economy. That is absolutely huge. And I want everyone here to know, you did that. Quite literally, you did that. Had you not done the hard work to get each one of us here elected, I see many MP colleagues, every single one of us, we know the only reason we are sitting in these seats is because of the hard work of every person here. So thank you so much. And... I'm just going to conclude by saying, you know, we have the plan to seize this opportunity for Canada in the 21st century. And at the very heart of that plan is to be sure that it's going to work for working people. We ha 
have to be faithful, and we are faithful to what was that core message in 2015. Remember 2015? A lot of people tell me this is their first convention. So if you remember 2015 and you were here then, put your hand up. Okay? Yay. If you weren't, also put your hand up because I'm so glad you're here now. So yay, let's extra yay for new people. But guys, the time up to 2015, and I'm looking here at Azam, because he remembers my by-election. That was 2013, okay? This was the dark days of opposition. Um, and we were confident, our leader was confident, we were gonna do it, but a lot of people didn't think that was gonna happen. And I really believe the reason we were elected in 2015 the reason we have won in every election since then, and the reason Justin Trudeau is going to be reelected in 2025, <laughs> is because of the very powerful idea that was at the heart of what we all said in 2015. And that was, we're going to work hard for the middle class and those working hard to join it. That is the core of who we are. Each one of us as people, that's what we want. We want prosperity, a good life for our neighbors, our friends, and their children. That's what we're about. And, you know, we talk about climate action, we talk about critical minerals, we talk about a price on pollution. This is the specific ways that we act on that core principle. But that is the core principle. And, you know, I, I have to give a big speech. My first commencement speech in my life I'm giving on Sunday. So I've been working on this speech. And I was reading to kind of inspire me for writing this speech, some great speeches by Canadian leaders. And I came across this speech that a really great liberal leader, Lester B. Pearson, yay, he was our guy that he gave, and I'm gonna read you a quote from it because it showed me how working for people has been at the heart of who we are as liberals ever since there was such a thing as a liberal. So this is what he said in 1962. We must resolve to fight for things as well as defend ourselves against things. Fight for the things that make for the better life. Strength must include the resolve to make our own free democracies work for the benefit of all the people, not merely for a few or for a single class. That's like exactly what we're doing right now. That is exactly our effort. And that is the heart, yeah. That's the heart of who we are as liberals, and it has been for generations. And that middle class and those working hard to join it, that's, that's what we're all about, all of us. So merci beaucoup. Et j'ai hâte de continuer de travailler avec vous. Et je pense qu'aujourd'hui et demain seront des jours très, très importants pour nous d'être ensemble et de créer le plan pour les années d'avenir. Vistia, thank you for that. And I'm going to echo what you said, which really is about people and all of you in this room and those of us who are on stage and all of the MP colleagues that are here. We would not be here if not for the incredible hard work of all of you and then some and then some in each of the communities. So a big round of applause for all of you. And whether it's Lester Pearson or us in the work that we've been doing for the middle class and those working hard to join it, I'm going to go back to Jonathan. And this is about building an economy that works for everyone. It is an economy that has to work from coast to coast to coast in urban communities and rural communities in the northern communities. So Jonathan, talk to us about what that means and the work that you're doing in that economy, the low-carbon economy of the future? 
C'est une question très importante pour un pays comme le Canada. Um, nous, nous avons les régions qui sont très différentes économiquement um, et, et bien sûr, nous, nous devons considérer comment on peut créer une économie qui, qui va être prospère dans chaque province et territoire. It is, um, It is, uh, it is simply not an acceptable position for any federal government to take that they don't care about one province or another province or territory. It is our responsibility to ensure that we have plans that are relevant to ensuring a prosperous future and good jobs and economic opportunity for kids that live in every province and territory in this country. And that certainly very much includes the hydrocarbon producing regions in this country, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Newfoundland, Labrador, British Columbia. The opportunities that exist in this country are different in Alberta than they are in Ontario, than they are in Nova Scotia. And we need to reflect that in the policy work that we do, in the collaboration that we have with provinces and territories to define the pathways to success. We have started what we call the Regional Energy and Resource Tables, which are intended to be one-on-one -on -one conversations with provinces, including obviously indigenous peoples, industry and labor in those conversations, but focusing on those areas of opportunity that are greatest in each province and territory so that we actually have a plan that is specific to Saskatchewan, a plan that is very specific to Nova Scotia. As I said before, the opportunities available to Canada are enormous and every different province and territory shares some of those opportunities, but they are different between regions. And we are seeing results already from the work that's being done. If you look at Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, the agreements that have been signed with German companies on hydrogen from wind, from onshore and offshore wind. In Quebec, battery manufacturing, critical minerals. We just announced a lithium mine that was approved. In Ontario, it's batteries, but it's, it's electric vehicles. And Francois-Philippe can talk about that quite a bit. Uh, a palladium mine that we just approved in northern Ontario. In, in Saskatchewan, the lowest carbon potash mine, the biggest investment in Saskatchewan's history being made in rural Saskatchewan. It I was just going to say, Jonathan is originally from Saskatchewan, so we have Saskatchewan representation right here. In, in Alberta, Air Products announced a major hydrogen facility, and Imperial Oil announced a major biofuels facility. In, in, in Vancouver, a huge focus on fuel cell related technology and the expansion of the Vancouver port to allow us to export products to Japan and South Korea and other allies around the world. We are seeing the progress. And we are working very hard to ensure that we have thoughtful plans going forward. As Chris just said, I grew up in Saskatchewan. This is very personal for me. I see some of our Saskatchewan friends in the front here. It is, it is a plan for Canada, but it is a plan for every part of Canada. And once again, I would just go back to, you need a plan. You need a plan that acknowledges the reality of climate change. You need a plan that is thoughtful and focuses on how we seize the economic opportunities associated with moving to a low carbon economy. We have that plan. That plan is working. And we will have to ask Mr. Polyev, where is your plan? Indeed. I'm going to go back to Francois Philippe. And um, in that plan, are these things that uh, we call supply chains. As the Minister for Trade and for Small Business and helping businesses get into those supply chains, not only in Canada and throughout Canada, but into the world, into those markets, into that 1.5 billion that uh, Francois Philippe talked about earlier, we often use the term supply chains. So Francois Philippe, talk to us about how you're building and strengthening the supply chains across Canada so that we, and how you are selling to, across Canada, to the world, we're doing this together, on being the reliable supplier and therefore generating the kinds of jobs that are not only today, but they're jobs for decades to come. Well, merci, Marie. Et, et avant même de commencer, j'aimerais qu'on qu reconnaisse, est-ce que mes collègues députés peuvent se lever? Parce qu'on en a parlé beaucoup de mes collègues. Est-ce que les députés fédéraux peuvent se lever 
Euh, J'aimerais que vous leur donniez une grande main d'applaudissement parce que vous savez, ce n'est pas seulement les gens qui sont ici, mais c'est chacun et chacune de ceux que vous voyez dans la salle qui font une différence dans chacune des communautés au Canada. Alors, je leur donne une grande main d'applaudissement. Je vois Stéphane, je vois Jenna, je vois tout le monde qui est là parce que s'il y a une chose qu'on a appris au Parti libéral, c'est qu'on travaille en équipe. Puis ce que vous voyez aujourd'hui, évidemment, c'est l'équipe libérale qui est là. La deuxième chose que je voulais dire tantôt, c'est que oui, on a gagné, oui, on a tiré des investissements. Mais aux dizaines de milliers de travailleurs et travailleuses qui nous regardent ce soir, je leur dis toujours un grand merci. C'est grâce à votre talent, c'est grâce à votre expertise, c'est grâce à votre excellence que le Canada peut gagner dans l'économie du 21e siècle. Mesdames et messieurs, je vous demanderai de donner une grande main d'applaudissement à tous les travailleurs à travers le pays qui sont avec nous, qui nous appuient parce qu'ils comprennent qu'on est en train de bâtir un avenir pour eux, un avenir dans l'économie du 21e siècle. Et je sais qu'ils sont avec nous ce soir. Je pense que, que Mary a posé une question fort intéressante. Ce qu'on constate à travers le monde aujourd'hui, c'est que les chaînes d'approvisionnement qui étaient globales deviennent régionales et qu'on met plus d'emphase sur la résilience que sur l'efficacité, comme on a vu dans le temps. Et dans cette économie-là, je peux vous dire que le Canada gagne. Ce qu'on a essayé de faire, nous, ici, évidemment, c'est de s'insérer dans des chaînes d'approvisionnement stratégiques. Et je vais reprendre, par exemple, les mots du président Biden. Vous avez vu que le président Biden est venu ici récemment. Le président Biden a dit plusieurs choses. Mais une chose qui est intéressante, c'est quand les Canada et les États-Unis travaillent ensemble, nous faisons de grandes choses. Alors, l'idée, ça a été comment on positionne le Canada dans les chaînes d'approvisionnement du 21e siècle. La première chose qu'on a faite avec le premier ministre, c'était au niveau de la, de la fabrication, de la biofabrication pour s'assurer qu'on puisse protéger la qualité de vie des Canadiens. Comme je dis souvent, on n'a pas choisi la pandémie. On ne choisira pas s'il y en a une autre, mais on peut choisir de mieux être préparé. C'est exactement ce qu'on a fait pour, pour assurer que dans l'avenir, le Canada soit bien positionné. La deuxième chose, oui, on peut se donner une main d'applaudissement parce que, honnêtement, je pense que euh, le Canada a montré le meilleur de ça. Si vous savez, à l'époque, on avait une capacité de faire à peu près 30 millions de vaccins. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui, on est près de 610 millions. Donc, on assure la santé et sécurité des Canadiens. Mais vous savez, dernièrement, j'étais avec le premier ministre et on regardait l'arc du temps. Ce qu'on a fait, par exemple, en investissant pour faire de l'aluminium vert, par exemple, au Saguenay, pour faire, par exemple, de l'acier vert à Hamilton et à Sudbury, pour s'assurer qu'on va faire des batteries vertes à travers le monde, pour s'assurer qu'on va faire du plastique vert, aujourd'hui, c'est ça les chaînes d'approvisionnement dont on a besoin. C'est ça qui fait que le Canada gagne. Je vais vous donner un exemple. Récemment, euh, les grands manufacturiers regardent le Canada. On a, par exemple, du côté du Saguenay, BMW a annoncé que tous les véhicules fabriqués en Amérique du Nord utiliserait de l'aluminium qui est fait au Saguenay, au Québec. Pourquoi? Parce que c'est l'aluminium le plus vert au monde. C'est comme ça qu'on gagne. Et c'est comme ça qu'on va assurer l'économie du futur. C'est exactement ce que le premier ministre disait. Aujourd'hui, les gens regardent le Canada. Pourquoi? Parce qu'on s'est positionné comme l'économie qui va être décarbonée. C'est comme ça qu'on attire des investissements. C'est comme ça qu'on assure la prospérité sur les prochaines générations. Et je le dis souvent à mes collègues, c'est des opportunités générationnelles. Ce qu'on est en train de voir, Christian disait, c'est que ce qu'on est en train de saisir, je le dis souvent, saisissons l'opportunité. C'est des opportunités qui vont positionner le Canada dans l'économie du 21e siècle. Et vous vous rappelez peut-être que quand le président Biden est venu, il a même parlé du corridor. Vous savez, on s'était dit, le Canada va se positionner non seulement dans le secteur des batteries, des véhicules électriques, mais on a même parlé aussi des semi-conducteurs. Bien, imaginez-vous, dans le discours du président américain, le président parlait du fameux corridor de semi-conducteurs entre Albany et Bromont-Québec en disant que non seulement si on veut être résilient en Amérique du Nord, parce que l'idée derrière l'IRA aux États-Unis et même ce qu'on a appelé le Chips Act, moi je dis souvent à mes collègues américains, c'est de la résilience. Si on veut être résilient en Amérique du Nord, le Canada doit faire partie de l'équation. C'est exactement ce que le président des États-Unis est venu nous dire ici au Canada. Et c'est pour ça qu'aujourd'hui qu'on voit que le Canada gagne. Donc que ce soit dans le domaine des semi-conducteurs, que ce soit au niveau des minéraux critiques, que ce soit au niveau des véhicules électriques, le Canada est en train de se positionner de façon stratégique. Et c'est ça ce qui va faire qu'on va avoir des emplois pour les années à venir, les décennies à venir. Alors, Mary, I, I could not feel more confident about the future. Christian said it. We have really put Canada to win in this economy of the 21st century. We have the smart supply chain. We have the people. We have the technology. We have the energy. Go Canada! Go Canada. Go Canada also means an inclusive Canada. We talk often um, 
amongst ourselves about, you know, we look at it through this lens, right? I mean, what is it that we're doing all the time and everything that we do to make sure that we really are working for the middle class and those working hard to join and that we are working in an economy and building an economy for all Canadians, which include women, which include Indigenous peoples, which includes racialized peoples. So I'm so thrilled that the work that we have been doing, particularly for small and medium-sized businesses, we saw that during the pandemic, about supporting, for supporting those inclusive businesses and those entrepreneurs because they are in the heart of all our communities all across Canada. Christian, I'm gonna come back to you to speak about that because when it comes to an inclusive economy, and um, and I know as you know the person that uh, that that leads the women's entrepreneurship strategy. We are seeing women businesses, women-owned businesses grow in this country. We are helping those. <laughs> those that are already that that already businesses looking to grow, that is happening to the tune of seven thousand more in the country those women-owned businesses that want to start to the tune of 5,000 more businesses. But I off, you know, back to the point that you said earlier, Christian, about uh, early learning and childcare. Think about that. We've got a higher number of women participating in our economy because of childcare. We've got women-owned businesses and charging the way forward because they're able to be a mom and a business leader. So I'm coming back to you to talk about what, you know, people often talk to us about, um, you know, they say, look, you talk about the social policies a lot, like child care, like the Canada Child Benefit, like parental leave, but they are really the prerequisites to smart economic policy. Absolutely. Et je voudrais vraiment, pour un moment, remercier tous nos collègues qui sont ici du Québec. Parce que c'est vraiment grâce à l'exemple, le leadership du Québec, que oui, bravo! Tous nos collègues du Québec sont là, là. Oui, bravo! Voilà. Le leadership du Québec, surtout le leadership des féministes du Québec, que c'était possible pour tout le Canada d'avoir une politique, euh, une stratégie nationale par, pour les garderies. Parce que, oui, c'est ça, parce que le Québec a démontré pour nous tous que, oui, c'est une politique sociale, mais c'est surtout une politique économique. So really, Thank you so much to the feminists of Quebec. And I bet you Madame Marois has never before been thanked at a labor convention. But I talked to her as we were putting together our early learning and child care strategy to get some advice. So we can work together. And I do, when we're talking about that, I'd like us to take one moment to really say thank you to Ken Dryden and Paul Martin. You know, they worked so hard, and that foundation that they laid has made it possible for us to finally get it over the line. And you know what? Canadian women are never going to let anyone take that away from them, are we? Now, I just want to talk a little bit, you know, Francois-Philippe said something really important about thanking everyone here. And one of the things that I think we all learned during the pandemic is that the most essential work in our country is often the least thanked and the least well paid. So maybe we could all right now take a moment to clap for and thank the essential workers in this building who are gonna make our convention possible. You know, people, people have been nice. I've been shaking hands and hugging people, and a lot of people have said, you work so hard, Minister. By the way, don't call me Minister. Call me Hreskia, please. Um, but the people who are going to clean this building after we leave, they work harder than anybody else. And I am so glad that our government has been investing 
in the most vulnerable with things like the Canada worker benefit, with things like our grocery rebate. That is the compassionate thing to do. It is also economically the right thing to do. I'm going to say two more very quick things. Um, the first is actually a tribute to Jonathan Wilkinson. So, you know, we have been talking about how Canada has these great opportunities, and for sure we do. But as Jonathan has been saying, and of course I totally agree with him, you need a plan to take advantage of those opportunities. And I'm going to be a little more specific. You could say that for the Canada of the 20th century, what was like the most essential circulatory system? What was the thing that a Canadian government had to do for us to be a country and for us to be prosperous? I'll tell you what, railroads. And what is the thing we have to do for the 21st century? What is our railroad of the 21st century? And I'll tell you what it is. Electricity. Yes? And Jonathan has been saying this to all of us for a while. And we think he's smart and we listen to him. So when we were putting together the budget, we said, you know what? The government of Canada has to make a historic investment in increasing our power generation. Now you may think, wow, she is so boring. I can't believe on a Thursday night at a convention, Christia is talking to us about electri electricity. This is not boring. Tr electrifying, yeah. Trust me, this is not boring. This is the future of whether we have an economy and whether we have jobs or not. So, if you see Jonathan later on, buy him a drink and say thank you very much for ensuring that that railway of the 21st century is going to be built. Thank you, Jonathan. And, yeah, yay, Jonathan. Jonathan thank you. And I'm going to say one last, last, last thing, okay? Super last. So I went to university in the United States. And I remember before I left, an alumni of the university I went to, like they had coffee with the kids to like prepare them. And he said, oh, you know, like, you're Canadian, all your life you've been taught, don't brag too much, don't be boastful, that's rude. And he said, and I said, yeah, of course, it is rude to brag and be boastful. And he said, you will be eaten alive in the United States if you have that attitude. They will destroy you. That is not how they are. Now, I still think the Canadian way of being polite of being modest, not bragging too much. This is the right way to be as a person. I say that to my kids. But as a country, guys, let's brag a little, let's you know? Together. Let's be proud of brag. what we have. Let's be proud of our opportunities. Let's not let anybody tell us, okay. talk down our country, talk down all the great things we are and we are doing. We can own the podium in the 21st century. We are getting there. If we all do our jobs properly, we will get there. So we are so lucky to live in the best country in the world. And let's let people know that that's how we feel. Brag. Let's brag. So this panel is coming to a closure in about four and a half minutes. The reason I know that is because I have a clock right there that tells me you have four and a half minutes left because we're going to have a great main event. So in the next, yay, main event. Yeah. The leader of the party, yay. But I'm going to uh, do two quick things. I'm going to throw it to Jonathan because he wants to talk a little bit about some of the really terrific work in the North with Indigenous people. And then I'm going to, Francois Philippe. You're going to close us off, but I'm going to John right, first. All right, good, okay. <laughs> I, um, so I'll, I'll, I will be brief um, to leave time for my friend Francois Philippe, but, um, but I would say that, you know, this industrial, clean industrial strategy for Canada is about the development of resources that actually are consistent with moving to a low carbon future. It is about resource enabled industries like clean steel and clean aluminum. It's a batteries and electric vehicle manufacturing. But it's also about thinking about how we actually um, work 
in the context of our commitment to reconciliation with Indigenous peoples in this country. We've spent a long time thinking about governance, and we've spent a long time thinking and working with Indigenous partners on services. But the area where we have more work to do, I mean, we have more work to do in those areas too, but where we have a lot of work to do is in economic reconciliation. Stephen Harper, when he changed the environmental assessment processes in this country, destroyed the environmental credibility, and he pitted Indigenous communities against proponents. What, what, what we need to do is work to ensure that Indigenous communities get long-term benefits from the projects that are developed in their traditional territories. That's about... That means, that means equity participation, that means benefits, but it also means a voice in how good projects are actually structured so that they can move ahead in a way that are consistent with environmental sustainability and with the recognition that we have to engage Indigenous communities in this conversation. That is at the heart of the work that we are doing as we build an economy that is an inclusive and a prosperous economy for the future. Okay, so to the final close up, Francois Philippe, why don't you take us home? <laughs> Whoa! Wow. Are you excited? Yeah, I am. Listen, Wendy, and I'll leave you on these words for the next two, three days. When the President of the United States came here recently, he said one thing which was very profound. A country can never be more optimistic than its leaders. Let's make sure that we show all Canadians how optimistic we are about the future. Let's talk about possibilities. Let's talk about ambition. Let's talk about Canada winning in the 21st century. Let's show the world that Canada is the place to be in the 21st century. And that the Liberal Party of Canada will lead us in the next election with a great leader. Let's stand up for Canada. Merci tout le monde. Merci d'avoir été avec nous ce soir. Canada, let's stand up. Let's be proud. Canada. Bonsoir à tout le monde. Merci de nous avoir accueillis. My esteemed colleague and friends, we're looking forward to spending the next three days with all of us. Come and say hello. I'm looking forward to lots of hugs because finally we're in this room and we're able to give each other hugs and high fives. And here it is to the Liberal Party of Canada to Canada. Merci beaucoup, Mary Ng, Chrystia Freeland, Jonathan Wilkinson, and François Philippe Champagne. We'll continue in a few minutes with our special guest speaker. We invite you to stay seated. La programmation, la programmation continuera dans quelques minutes. À tout de suite.
Everyone, please take your seats. Veuillez vous asseoir. C'est avec grand plaisir qu'on accueille sur scène le député de Gatineau, the Member of Parliament for Gatineau, Steve McKinnon. Bonsoir tout le monde. How is the Liberal Party doing this evening? Je suis bien content de vous accueillir dans la région de Gatineau, Ottawa. Welcome to Gatineau, Ottawa, on the part of all of us MPs, the 12 of us in your nation's capital that serve you proudly. Merci, merci de nous rendre visite. Nous, nous avons une pensée spéciale pour les gens dans notre région qui sont aux prises avec la crue, les eaux qui montent. Donc, on, on prend une minute pour penser à nos voisins à Ottawa et à Gatineau qui sont aux prises avec les inondations. But yes, my name is Steve McKinnon, and I'm so proud to have a special job tonight to introduce our outgoing two-term president of the Liberal Party of Canada, Suzanne Cowan. <laughs> Suzanne has been an integral part of the party for nearly her entire life. She first knocked on doors at age five with my friend and your friend, Senator, uh, retired now Senator Jim Cowan. And Jim and Sheila must be in the room here tonight. Are you there? Jim, stand up. And Sheila, stand up. Take a bow. Jim, Sheila, and Suzanne, no strangers to hard work. Que ce soit en tant que membre de la course à la direction de Justin Trudeau, d'organisatrice clé de bon nombre de campagnes électorales au, ou au poste de vice-présidente et de présidente du Conseil national, Suzanne a travaillé sans relâche pour bâtir un parti accueillant qui est à l'image des valeurs de l'ensemble des Canadiens. Et après cinq années de bons et loyaux services à titre de présidente, le leg de Suzanne est incroyable, aussi bien en termes de leadership que de dévouement à notre parti. Under Suzanne's leadership, We've won two consecutive elections. We've improved our grassroots fundraising. And especially, and I think she's most proud of this, increased and boosted and motivated and cajoled and went across the country and knocked on doors and got our volunteer base going. That is the legacy of Suzanne Cowan. Now, as a son of the Maritimes myself, I'm proud that she's a daughter of Nova Scotia, but a national leader. And before I was the MP for Gatineau, I was the national director of this party, and I know just how much work goes into these roles. Not just her parents, but her partner Andrew, her, her daughters Clara and Grace, they would know as well that the presidency of the Liberal Party of Canada might be a volunteer job, but it is a full-time job. It is day to night. It takes an incredible level of commitment. You have to be made of special things to serve as the leader, as the president of the, uh, the leader too, but the president of the Liberal Party of Canada. And so I'm very pleased and proud and chuffed. Accueillez, s'il vous plaît, notre premier bénévole, notre président, please, Welcome our chief volunteer, our outgoing president, Suzanne Cowan. Thank you. Wow. Well, hello, everyone. Bonsoir, tout le monde. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to be here with all of you. This certainly has been a long time coming. And I'm sure, and I know, we are in for an amazing weekend of conversations, of debates, of speeches. One of those is, of course, our amazing leader, Justin Trudeau, who will be coming out here shortly. It's going to be fantastic, and it's so great to be here with all of you tonight. So welcome to everybody here in the room, 
and of course to everybody watching from home. We haven't been together in person since 2018 in my hometown of Halifax, but we sure have accomplished a lot. Tens of millions of door knocks. Amazing. Hundreds of thousands of volunteers trained, and of course, most importantly, two more strong mandates to keep giving progress for Canadians. <laughs> now that's what I call hope and hard work. So thank you, thank you so much for that. But our success is powered by dedicated volunteers right across this country. All of this is because of you. You truly are the driving force and the beating heart of our party. Notre parti croit qu'il est toujours possible de faire mieux. Et vous êtes la raison pour laquelle ce parti est accueillant, énergique et progressiste. Nous croyons que nous sommes au mieux quand nous discutons avec les Canadiens et les Canadiennes, quand nous rassemblons des gens de tout l'horizon et comme nous sommes unis. When I first started volunteering, as Stephen was saying, even from the age of five, holding hands with my parents, who are right down there, my mom and dad, <laughs> while out knocking doors <laughs> in my hometown of Halifax so many years ago, I felt welcome and excited to be part of our huge liberal family. I could feel the energy of all of us coming together to do this common thing. And I continue to feel that way every election since. It feeling of optimism that you get from making those calls and knowing the progress you're making call after call and knock after knock, it's really an incredible feeling. That feeling that pushes you forward even when the street lights are coming on. Right, Arif? We went street, till the street lights came on many, many times during the last few campaigns. À travers nos bons moments et nos moments difficiles, j'ai toujours eu confiance en nos réussites. Et c'est grâce à tout ce qui compose notre mouvement. Et ce sentiment est encore plus profond depuis que je suis devenue la présidente de notre parti. Ces cinq dernières années étaient parmi les plus inspirantes et stimulantes de ma vie. I've had the opportunity to visit hundreds and hundreds of ridings, to speak with thousands of liberals in every province and territory. I've loved hearing the stories that brought him to the party. What made you first step up, raise your hand, and say yes to taking that first step in joining our party. And what I've learned is that even though all the stories of how you came might be different, there's always one common thread, and that is someone putting up their hand to do a little bit of good in the community that they love. People like the nurse that I met when I was out canvassing with Leah Taylor Roy she was volunteer. Yes. She was volunteering because she loved her job and she wanted to keep doing her job, but she didn't know how she was going to keep doing that with rising childcare costs. So, her hope and hard work helped us all deliver $10 a day daycare. Or when I was in Malpec PEI with Heath McDonald, and we met a family with a young one in a stroller and another one on the way, and their biggest concern was how they were going to be able to continue paying their bills while growing their family and being able to stay in the community that they loved near their family. So for them, it was all about the Canada Child Benefit and making housing more affordable. But the countless, countless stories and experiences I have, there was really one that has stayed with me and will stay with me. 
It was that core group of young people that was in every single riding and every campaign office that I went to across this country. Their energy, their positivity, and their undeniable determination was so key in making sure that we were winning all those close races. Thank you. Thank you to those amazing young volunteers that are the energy and the driving force behind our campaigns right across this country. Incredible volunteers who kept saying, okay, one more call. Well, just one more street. And some ways, sometimes simply, like when I was with Talib, it was just maybe one more door. Let's just do one more door tonight. These people and their stories, they drive our progress. And it's because of you that we are stronger and more united than ever before. I have to say, it's, it's hard to believe that five years ago, last month, you put your trust in me to become president of your party. And that day, I made a promise that with your help, we were going to build and train our volunteer base with the most advanced tools to make sure that we kept growing our ground game. And we delivered together. Thank you. Grâce à nos programmes de leadership, nos journées d'action et nos événements de mobilisation, l'année dernière, nous avons engagé plus de 1 million conversations d'un océan à l'autre. Nous avons investi dans des technologies qui ont contribué à élargir notre mouvement et à ajouter encore plus de Canadiennes. Our party also launched a volunteer appreciation program to make sure that our volunteers felt heard and appreciated. And since 2019, we have thanked more than 30,000 volunteers. That's an incredible number and a number that grows and grows every month. So thank you to all of you. You really are the heart of everything that we do. Our party grows because of you. You took our goals our aspirations and our ambitions, and you turn them into action. And even when a global pandemic presented itself and presented us with new challenging, that is an a, a understatement. Challenges are an understatement, absolutely. You stepped up and we found new ways to communicate. During those first few months of the pandemic, I had some of the best conversations with volunteers that I've ever had just reaching out, picking up the phone to check in. They needed someone to talk to. I think we all needed someone to talk to. It was really one of an incredible experience and I loved having those conversations even though it was in such a challenging time. All of that work that we did from home led to one very important and critical thing. It led to our third consecutive liberal mandate. An incredible achievement. Give yourselves a hand. Our third consecutive liberal mandate. Thank you. And in Halifax, I did ask you for one more thing, for us all to take on a new role, that of fundraiser. And you certainly took me up on it. Stephen, I think you would agree. I, I know you're out there somewhere. Thank you for all your work on this. We convinced more Canadians than ever before to join our Victory Fund, and the Victory Fund provides much needed stable grassroots funding in every riding across this country. Our Laurier Club continues to grow, and the Laurier Club provides essential funding that get us through stability and challenging times. We broke new fundraising grassroots records and ran two fully funded winning campaigns. <laughs> because of you and all the work that we've done together, you have helped put us in the best financial position in the last half century with more grassroots donors than ever before. So thank you.
And that's the reason why I know that we will be ready whenever the next election should come. But confidence is different than complacency, and we can't pause for one minute, especially with the opposition that we face. Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives have threatened to roll back our progress and take Canada backwards. And it's going to take all of us working together like never before to make sure that that does not happen. But I know, and I think all of us here know, and I think once people see how amazing we, a weekend we have, a lot more people out there will know that we have the team to do it. We will win the next election whenever that should happen. Mais je ne resterai pas en retraite de ce combat. Je serai là, à vos côtés, pour frapper des portes, pour faire des appels et pour amasser des fonds. Mes souliers rouges sont prêts pour faire du chemin. <laughs> Mon mandat de présidente arrive peut-être à sa fin, mais le titre bénévole restera toujours collé sur mon cœur. Being your president, your chief volunteer, has been the privilege of a lifetime. But it hasn't been a journey that I've taken alone. To all the members of the National Board that I've worked with, thank you so much for your unwavering support, dedication, and commitment. You are fierce advocates for the communities that you represent. And let me tell every Liberal across the country that you are well represented by your provincial, territorial, and, pro and commission leadership at the board table. They are an incredible group, and it's been such a privilege to work with all of you. <laughs> to my family who stood beside me every step of the way, thank you. You picked up the slack on the hundreds of days that I've been out on the campaign trail. To my mom and dad, thank you so much for taking me out door knocking all those years ago. You've provided me with countless encouragement, support, advice, mostly solicited, but let's be honest, some unsolicited advice along the way as well. But I absolutely could not have done it without both of you. Thank you. I love you. And to my daughters, Grace and Clara, thank you for your patience and just mostly thank you so much for standing by your mom. Thank you to our incredible team of MPs who are always asking what more they can do to help to support our party. To Azam Ishmael, our incredible executive director and the 2021 campaign chair, Thank you. You and your team, you work quietly, listlessly, and tirelessly to keep our movement going and keep our party strong day in and day out. And I could not have done this without all of you. I'm so grateful to the entire LPC team. And finally, thank you, Justin, for your trust in me and your partnership over the last 10 years. Only you could have convinced a mom of a five-year-old and a one-year-old that it was a great idea to get involved in a leadership campaign. <laughs> but, but, you know, I was not the only young mom on that campaign. That campaign was a chorus and a chaos of babies and toddlers in the background of every single call, and it was amazing. Ten years, three successful elections later, it's been an adventure I will never forget. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> I have never been more hopeful for the future of our party. And I've never been more confident 
that we will continue to do what needs to take to build our party and make sure we stay on solid footing. We will continue to innovate our programs, to bring in new ideas from the ground, grass up, and be ready to make life better for Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Because we have the team, we have the plan, and we have the leader to do that. So, and one more thing, a little bit of our secret weapon, that we know that with a little bit of hope and a lot of hard work, that better is always possible. <laughs> Thank you, my friends. Merci, mes amis. Bon congrès. Thank you, Suzanne. Merci pour tout. If you'd like a seat for the next part of the program, there are still some available towards the back of the room. Si vous aimeriez vous asseoir pour le reste de la programmation, il y a encore des chaises disponibles vers l'arrière de la salle. We'll be back shortly. Nous continuerons bientôt. Merci.
Bonsoir, good evening. We'd ask you to go back to your seats. Our next speaker is about to start. On vous demanderait de vous rasseoir. Notre prochaine conférence va débuter sous peu. Merci. Liberals, please join me in welcoming, veuillez accueillir la députée d'Unsic Cartierville, l'honorable Mélanie Joly. your hard work and thank you for your leadership over the last years. As president of the party, you've helped to build a political organization that has a ground game like no other. And you were able to lead us to win not only one election, but two elections. So thank you, a warm, a warm round of applause for Suzanne. Alors, chers amis, chers militants, Bonsoir et bienvenue au Congrès du Parti libéral du Canada. I would like also to welcome all our international delegates coming from around the world that are here now in Ottawa with us. Thank you so much. And welcome to your Liberal Convention. You know, I've been on the road a lot lately. And I couldn't be happier to be here at home. Ça fait du bien d'être en famille. Over the past 18 months, I've had the privilege to travel across the world and represent Canadians. From Peru to Ukraine, from South Korea to Kenya. And while the entire world is filled with people who want to do good, who always want to do better, I'm convinced now more than ever, that Canada is the best place to call home. When I tell people abroad that I'm Canada's foreign minister, their faces light up. Because no other, because no matter where you are in the world, Canada has a special place in people's imagination. And everyone I meet has a story to tell about Canada. And what I hear are stories of hope, stories of hard work, stories of people coming together. Le Canada, c'est un concentré de ce que le monde offre de mieux. Un pays qu'on a bâti ensemble à notre image, en français, en anglais et dans les langues autochtones. We are strong, not in spite of our differences but because of them. And we stand up for what we believe in. And we're honest with ourselves when we're not doing enough. On n'est pas parfait, mais on investit chaque jour pour devenir meilleur. We believe in progress that benefits everyone, no matter where you live, where you work, or who you love. And that is what 
It means to be Canadian. In my current job, I spend a lot of time with Prime Minister Trudeau around the world at international summits. Whether we are at the United Nations, at the G7, at the G20, or La Francophonie, the same thing always happens. Progressive leaders from around the world come to see Prime Minister Trudeau with one question in mind. How did you do it? How did you put a price on pollution and manage to win two back-to-back -back elections? How did you lift how did you lift 300,000 children out of poverty? How did you create a million jobs after the, pan the pandemic? And my personal favorite, how did you get $10 a day childcare done across the country, not within years, but within months? And I can hear Karina Gold screaming right now. And do you know what the answer is? It's some things that we've all heard him say in the past and that we still continue to hear him say. It's something that we all believe in. Hope and hard work. De l'espoir et du travail acharné. And that's the promise of Justin Trudeau. In every single campaign he ran on, in, in every single campaign he ran on, and that's why he's our leader, and that is why he's our prime minister. C'est ce qui fait de Justin Trudeau le doyen des leaders progressistes à travers le monde. Et c'est ce qui fait de lui une force pour le changement. When we look at what's happening around the world, we see authoritarians and far-right movements growing. We see disinformation spreading. We see the rising backlash to the most basic rights of women, girls, and LGBTQ people. And we see war criminals invading their neighbors, committing unspeakable atrocities at every turn. But in these turbulent times, Canada remains a beacon of hope. And we can't take that for granted. Our geography may have protected us from conflict and instability in the past, but the rising tide of the far right has already reached our shores. Just to think about Pierre Poilievre, got elected leader of the Conservative Party. He stood shoulder to shoulder with and gave a platform to conspiracy theorists. He said to hell with fighting climate change and fought to protect the biggest polluters instead of our planet. And he puts the interests of gun lobbies above the safety of our families. And once Mr. Poliev became leader, all we got was more of the same. He undermines the public institutions at the very heart of our democracy. And instead of standing up to conservative caucus members who attack a woman's right to choose, he gives them promotions. Pierre Poliev can yell the word freedom all he wants. Canadians know, and we all know, that he means freedom for some, but not for all. Pierre Poliev a démontré qu'il va tout faire pour satisfaire les éléments les, les éléments les plus radicaux de sa base. Aucune attaque n'est trop vicieuse, ni même trop ridicule. Et ceux qui croyaient qu'il se calmerait une fois qu'il aurait gagné la course au leadership, le constatent maintenant. Il ne changera pas. C'est l'exception qui confirme la règle. Pierre Poliev, on ne gagne jamais à le connaître. Et pour mes amis du Québec, vous le savez, 
Ce n'est pas le Bloc québécois qui est capable de défendre nos intérêts contre la droite radicale et de nous faire progresser au pays. On se rappelle encore lorsque Stephen Harper a coupé les vives à Radio-Canada, il y avait 49 députés du Bloc québécois à la Chambre des communes que ces mêmes députés bloquistes ont été incapables d'empêcher les conservateurs de mettre la hache dans notre culture. Les seuls qui ont livré pour le Québec, ce sont nous, les libéraux de Justin Trudeau. Yves-François Blanchette n'était même pas à la table de négociation quand on est arrivé à une entente avec les provinces qui mettraient des milliards de dollars dans la santé au Québec. Ce n'est pas Yves-François Blanchette qui annonçait aux travailleurs et aux travailleuses de la Davy qu'ils avoir des bonnes jobs et ça pour les 30 prochaines années. C'est Justin Trudeau. Et c'est sûrement pas grâce à Yves-François Blanchette qu'on va investir des sommes records dans la protection du français au Québec et à travers le pays parce qu'il va voter contre le budget. Comme le dit ma grande amie Diane Lepitier, ce qu'on a besoin au Québec, c'est des faiseux, pas des chialeux. Eight years ago, we were presented with a choice. More Harper cuts and conservative cynicism or compassion and a commitment to growing the middle class. Canadians chose the latter. And since then, all of us in this room, MPs, staff members, liberal volunteers and supporters have worked darn hard each and every day to make sure that this country is a better place to live. And today, today, the choice that confronts Canadians is even more stark. And the stakes have never been higher. In moments like this one, who is leading matters. And who they fight for matters. Avec Justin Trudeau, nous avons un chef qui se bat pour protéger notre planète pour qu'on la puisse la transmettre en santé aux générations futures, qui se bat pour le droit à l'avortement, qui se bat pour la classe moyenne, qui se bat pour que les Autochtones aient les mêmes opportunités que tous les autres Canadiens. We've got a leader who fights for our healthcare workers, for our teachers, for our farmers, who fights for people just like you, who roll up their sleeves every day to make sure that this country is a better place. So, sans plus attendre, j'ai le plaisir de vous présenter le 23e Premier ministre du Canada, Justin Trudeau! We begin tonight in Ottawa, where Justin Trudeau has now officially become the leader of the Federal Liberal Party. Le Canada est un grand projet inachevé et c'est à nous, avec tous les autres Canadiens, d'en faire le pays que nous voulons. Le temps est venu pour nous d'écrire un nouveau chapitre dans l'histoire de notre pays. This is the last stop of this campaign, but it is the very first stop of the next one. about me. This election is about you. Oui, c'est écrit à la page 90 de votre plateforme. Vous allez lire 90. Crossroads between a conservative party that would take Canada backwards or a government that always has your back. So if you want $10 a day childcare, go out and vote liberal. If you want an affordable home, if you want assault weapons to stay illegal, if you want Canada to lead the world on good green jobs, go out and vote liberal. 
Let's talk about the Canada Child Benefit that has lifted hundreds of thousands of kids out of poverty, a benefit that the Conservatives campaigned and voted against. L'accès à la propriété est hors de portée pour trop de gens. C'est le temps que ça change. We have places to be. Are there any other questions? When do I get to meet RuPaul? Oh. Just before we get to questions, I'm supposed to model healthy behavior. I'm going to go grab my coat and I'll be right back. It's been a difficult year, and we're not out of the crisis yet. Now, vaccines are coming. This is not an easy thing to do, but we all agree that it is the responsible thing to do. Canadians, polite, we're reasonable, but we also will not be pushed around. The freedom of a woman to choose belongs to her and her alone. So let us be clear-eyed about what we have accomplished. We have worked hard, and we have had a great campaign. We are united, hopeful, and resolute in our purpose. But know this. We have won nothing more and nothing less than the opportunity to work even harder. <laughs> Please welcome the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada and our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable, Le Très Honorable, Justin Trudeau! to see you guys tonight. Tout d'abord, merci Mélanie 
pour ces mots ce soir, surtout. Merci pour tout ton travail, que ce soit ici au Canada ou avec nos alliés à travers le monde. I also want to take a moment to give a very special thank you to Suzanne Cowan. <laughs> Suzanne, you've been on the front lines since 2013. You've knocked on thousands of doors, connected with Canadians in every province and territory. Our liberal movement wouldn't be the same without you. And even though this is your last convention as LPC president, you will always be part of this liberal team as one of our chief volunteers. How about a huge round of applause for everyone from Suzanne. Mes amis, c'est tellement un plaisir de vous voir ici au Congrès national libéral de 2023. C'est inspirant même de vous voir ce soir et de savoir à quel point on est tous ici pour améliorer notre pays ensemble. Je peux vous dire comment ça fait du bien de se rassembler en personne ce soir après cinq longues années depuis Halifax. Je veux saluer bien sûr tous ceux et celles qui participent à des congrès libéraux depuis des décennies. Merci pour votre dévouement au cours des années, à travers toutes nos succès et nos épreuves. And of course, to everyone who's here for the first time, welcome. Actually, actually, hang on, just a second. Show of hands, who's here at their very first in-person liberal convention? Ha <laughs> ha! Now let me tell you, your first liberal convention is always an amazing thing. Anyone here can tell you stories from their first conventions. The friends you make today, the experiences, the memories, they'll stick with you for a lifetime. So everybody else, let's give these first timers a huge round of applause and welcome. But to everyone here, thank you for stepping up. With your ideas and your enthusiasm, we will continue to make our liberal movement bigger and stronger. More than ever, in this consequential moment in the world, your energy is needed, all of you in this room and all of you across this country. It's because of your hard work that we can continue to deliver for Canadians. For every phone call, for every door you knock, for every conversation you engage in, you make our democracy stronger. So thank you. Merci pour tout ce que vous faites. My friends, as you saw from the video 10 years ago, on a stage much like this, I made a promise. I promised that I would begin, spend, and end every day working hard for Canadians. I said I would work, I would spend every day working hard to make sure we can leave our children a better world than the one we inherited from our parents. At the time, Now, at the time, we were still reeling from the 2008 financial crisis when Canadians, especially young Canadians, were telling us how worried they were about their future. And we needed to change that. You'll remember that in the mid-2010s, people in North America were faced with a political choice. One that offered to burn it all down with fear and anger, to attack our institutions, to isolate and to throw blame around. The other option was to get to work fixing it. And that's the choice Canadians made in 2015. You chose hope 
over fear, hard work over anger, and sunny ways over cynicism. En 2015 et encore en 2019 et en 2021, vous avez choisi une vision positive pour l'avenir. Vous avez choisi de soutenir la classe moyenne et ceux qui travaillent fort pour s'y joindre. Eh bien, aujourd'hui, on a à nouveau ce choix à faire. Et ce choix est maintenant plus important que jamais. Parce que le monde change rapidement. Parce que les gens sont de plus en plus polarisés parce qu'on doit affronter de nouveaux défis après une pandémie historique, parce qu'on voit l'effet réel et terrifiant des changements climatiques, parce qu'une nouvelle guerre en Europe menace la paix et la prospérité mondiale qu'on a connue pendant plus de 75 ans. On fait face à un amalgame de défis. This is a moment of uncertainty like none of us have ever seen in our lifetimes. And in this moment, as Canadians, as liberals, we must remember who we are. The world is changing fast, but our top priority will always remain building a better today and tomorrow for you and for your kids. This is the foundation of everything we do. And this is exactly what I want to talk about tonight. The positive future that we are building together. See, confident countries invest in themselves. And since 2015, we've been investing in Canadians in a deliberate and strategic way. Chaque fois qu'on crée une nouvelle mesure ou qu'on annonce un investissement, une des premières questions qu'on se pose, c'est comment ça va aider la classe moyenne et tous les Canadiens. When we created the Canada Child Benefit, we said, let's put more money back in the pockets of families who need it to help moms and dads with the costs of raising their kids. When we stood up to Donald Trump and renegotiated NAFTA, we worked hard to fight for Canadian jobs and our hard-working middle class. And more recently, when we invested to help ArcelorMittal DeFasco in phasing out coal-fired steel making, we did it because we knew that the demand for clean steel would only grow. We did it so we could secure great jobs for workers for generations to come. This is all part of what Liberals stand for. This is all part of our plan to not only withstand future storms, but thrive. Les politiciens conservateurs disent qu'on ne devrait pas investir dans nos travailleurs. On l'a vu encore il y a quelques semaines quand Pierre Polièvre s'est attaqué à notre entente historique avec Volkswagen. As you know, Volkswagen will build their first North American Gigafactory for EV batteries in the small town of St. Thomas, Ontario, which will create thousands upon thousands upon thousands of great jobs. This will be a national anchor for Canada's electric vehicle supply chain. Nos travailleurs sont les meilleurs au monde. Et les compagnies à l'international le savent très bien. C'est pour ça qu'ils choisissent d'investir dans nous, dans nos travailleurs. On a un des taux d'éducation les plus élevés et nos politiques d'immigration attirent des gens qualifiés de partout sur la planète. On fait croître notre économie, 
On lutte contre les changements climatiques et on renforce nos chaînes d'approvisionnement, tout ça en même temps. C'est ça, une vision tournée vers l'avenir. C'est ça, l'économie centrée sur le bien-être de tous les Canadiens. We're making sure that everyone benefits. And companies, but also leaders on the world stage, are noticing. When Prime Minister Kishida of Japan visited Canada, he said that he looks to what we're doing to build an economy that leaves no one behind. When we hosted Chancellor Schultz of Germany, he talked at length about our values of compassion and diversity. They know that we have the democratic values that make us reliable. We have great resources and even greater workers. But what ties this all together, what makes Canada really valuable, is we treat people with the respect and dignity they deserve. We care about equality. We care about reconciliation. We care about justice. It has never been more clear that everything is interwoven. But again, conservative politicians just don't get that. They don't connect the dots. They either say investing in Canadians is a waste of money or that our policies are too woke. <laughs> too woke? Hey, Pierre Polyev, it's time for you to wake up. Wake up. Wake up to the fact that a gender-balanced cabinet is a good thing and that women fully participating in the workforce is a good thing, not something to snub when it gets a shout-out from the President of the United States in our House of Commons. Wake up to the fact that under our government, fewer persons with disabilities are facing poverty, and in fact, Canada's poverty rates has been cut in half since 2015. Wake up to the fact that more moms are building careers because we've made childcare more affordable. When we see that women's participation in the economy has reached an all-time high, let me tell you something. $10 a day childcare is not woke policy, it's economic policy. Now, we all know that some of our opponents will try to clip some of my words out of context tomorrow to make it sound as if we think that everything is just fine. But this is not what I'm saying. Too many Canadians are struggling. On sait qu'il y a encore beaucoup de travail à faire. On sait qu'il y a trop de familles qui ont de la difficulté à payer leurs factures. C'est pour ça qu'on met de l'avant des mesures comme le remboursement pour l'épicerie qui va aider des millions de personnes. I just spent weeks speaking with thousands of Canadians in town halls across the country. 
Now, their questions are pretty far removed from the ones I hear from conservative politicians in the House of Commons. <laughs> Canadians want to talk about child care and dental care. They want to be talking about building a cleaner future, building a better future, because we're a nation of builders. Now, in February, I met with members of the Carpenters District Council of Ontario. There was a guy, Michael, a concrete formwork carpenter. He told me he and his crew had just finished building an addition to Sick Kids Hospital. He was really proud of it, and rightly so. But he also told me that sometimes he feels like the kind of skilled work that he does can be taken for granted. Michael, Canadians don't take you for granted. Actually, you know what, let's show them. Everyone today in this room, please stand up. I want you to give the biggest of standing ovations for Michael and for the workers just like him who build our hospitals, homes, roads, and our country every single day. Now, workers like Michael, they spend their days building things up. And they should inspire us all. Because as liberals, our vision is to lay a solid foundation for Canadians so they can be empowered to build up their dreams. This is why the choice we'll all face in a couple of years at the next election is so fundamentally important. We love you. <laughs> you see, we want to build things up while Pierre Polyev and his brokenest conservative party want to tear things down. We want to provide dental care for families. He says, no. We're bringing an EV battery gigafactory plant to Canada and creating thousands of jobs. Uh, he says, no. We put a price on pollution while giving money back to families. He says, no. We want to protect and promote our two official languages. He says, no. And he wants to shut down CBC Radio-Canada. Now, now, now let's, let's be honest. It just doesn't look very serious to have the leader of the official opposition exchanging memes with billionaires in the US to undermine Canadian independent institutions. Canadians, especially in our small towns across the country, rely on the CBC for their local news. <laughs> CBC Radio-Canada dessert des millions de Canadiens dans chaque coin du pays. Radio-Canada joue un rôle essentiel dans la défense et la promotion de la langue française à travers le Canada. Oui, le, le paysage médiatique est en train de changer et il va falloir s'adapter. Oui, c'est difficile, surtout avec la compétition des géants du web. Mais juste parce que c'est difficile, c'est une bonne raison d'abandonner nos artistes, notre langue et notre patrimoine pour attaquer l'indépendance des journalistes. Non, au contraire, quand c'est difficile, on relève nos manches et on se bat encore plus fort. Et j'ai un message pour nos créateurs et nos artistes à travers le pays. On ne vous laissera pas tomber 
tout comme on ne vous a pas laissé tomber pendant la pandémie, nous, on sera toujours là pour vous, pour les arts et pour la culture. My friends, we've made progress over the years, but there's still so much work to be done. And we have to be honest and clear-eyed about it. In the past years, we've built and renovated 1.8 million homes across the country, but families still need more affordable housing. We've lifted 138 long-term drinking water advisories, but we need to continue relentlessly until we finish the job. And by the way, everywhere there's still a long-term drinking advisory left, there's a project team and an action plan in place to resolve it. We need more mental health support and more help for those living with substance use and addictions challenges. So we're following the science, we're investing in health care, in patients, in nurses and doctors, but we know we've got to keep provinces on track to deliver results. This is Canada. It is not broken, but we are liberals and we know that in Canada, better is always possible. And this is why we have to be at our best. Canadians are counting on us, on our positive vision for the future because the alternative is too bleak. Pierre Polyev's populism, his slogans and buzzwords are not serious solutions to the serious challenges we're facing. Est-ce que le populisme de Pierre Polyev va vous faire voir un médecin plus rapidement? Est-ce que ces coupures vont aider un jeune à trouver un logement? Est-ce que ces slogans vont créer plus d'emplois dans nos communautés? Non! Parce qu'il n'a pas de plan sérieux. Dire aux gens d'investir dans les cryptos pour éviter l'inflation, courtiser des groupes anti-femmes sur YouTube, supporting illegal occupations that blockaded our streets and borders for weeks, parroting the talking points of the gun lobby, partnering with a group that said it was a myth that residential schools robbed indigenous children of their childhood, keeping MPs in his leadership team after they were happy to dine with a xenophobic German far-right politician. That's the exact opposite of responsible leadership. But this, this is what the Conservative Party of Canada has become under Pierre Polyèvre. Even Aaron O'Toole knew that. Before he left, he admitted that members of the Conservative Party went deep down into the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories during the pandemic, and they show no sign of coming out. <laughs> it's quite telling that when Pierre Polyev sat down with President Joseph R. Biden a month ago, he used his precious time to complain about vaccine mandates. Not borders, not jobs for the middle class, certainly not Ukraine, but vaccine mandates. Se servir de la mésinformation et de la désinformation pour amplifier la colère, 
Ce n'est pas une solution viable pour l'avenir. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'on doit faire en tant que libéraux pour contrer cette négativité? How, as liberals, do we share our positive message with Canadians? Well, we need to show Canadians every day that our plan is grounded in a better sense of what the future holds for all of us. You know, you often hear me talk about creating jobs, but it's actually about so much more than just that. In St. Thomas, Ontario, when a major auto assembly plant closed in 2011, people lost their jobs. But when these things happen to communities, they don't just lose jobs. They also lose sponsors for kids' hockey and soccer teams. They lose revenue for family-owned businesses. Kids move away. We all know what happens when the company leaves. It hollows out communities. It affects all Canadians, regardless of the party they vote for on election day. C'était la même chose pour le chantier Davy à Lévis. Quand Stephen Harper les a exclus de la stratégie nationale de construction navale en 2010, il n'a pas seulement mis des emplois à risque, il a mis des communautés à risque. You've all heard me talk before about conservative Canadians being our family members, our friends, and our neighbors. All Canadians, no matter who they vote for, they know the value of thriving communities. You know the value of an investment that brings a local plant to set up shop and create hundreds or even thousands of jobs in your town. But apparently Pierre Polyev doesn't. He doesn't seem interested in building strong communities. He's too busy building anger. Many conservative Canadians feel abandoned by what the Conservative Party has become. They haven't left their party. Their party left them. But our approach is to always be there for all Canadians. Notre mouvement libéral va continuer d'être là pour tous les Canadiens. Que vous soyez un immigrant nouvellement arrivé, que vous soyez autochtone avec des ancêtres ici depuis des millénaires, que vous soyez un producteur agricole depuis six générations, or a third generation blue collar energy worker, we are building a future for you, for your community, and for your kids. My friends, the world is changing fast. COVID, social media, wildfires, Ukraine, AI, hurricanes, demographic changes, an economy that's shifting. It's normal to feel disoriented. Liberals, conservatives, rural, urban, west, east, north, all Canadians, we have to be there for each other. And we have to navigate through this together with clear eyes and steady hands. When President Biden came, he said that he had never been more optimistic about the future that we are building together. This is the type of excitement we need to tap into when conservative politicians are amplifying fear, anger, and resentment. As progressives, let's be confident about what we stand for. When trolls try to bait you into their culture war talking points, don't fall for it. Instead, ground yourself in what we're working on, this great unfinished project of a nation.
a Canada that every day builds a healthier democracy, a Canada that creates meaningful careers for workers in a clean economy, a Canada that stands up to authoritarianism whenever it rears its head, a Canada where women always have the right to choose. Un Canada qui se fie sur les faits et sur la science. Un Canada qui prend la réconciliation au sérieux. Un Canada qui protège l'environnement. Un Canada où on bâtit un avenir prospère pour nos enfants et nos petits-enfants. Un Canada meilleur pour tous. Now, none of this is easy. And sometimes we get bruised up, but it's worth the fight. This great country didn't happen by accident, and it won't continue without effort. Liberals, Canadians, in these serious times, let's continue to work hard on serious solutions. And my friends, when the election comes, when Canadians need to make a consequential choice in this consequential moment, it will be the honor of my life to lead us through it and continue building a better future. So let us fight this fight together. Merci, mes amis. Adam, how do you feel? And welcome and introduce yourself. Thanks so much. Adam Vancouverton here from the riding of Milton. So good to be here with you, Ariel. Wow, this was an electric room for the last 20 minutes or so as our Prime Minister led us through a little bit of a, a retroactive, yeah. retrospective last seven uh, to, to ten years. And really all the optimism, the energy, the, the progressive ideas and, you know, Listing them off is really, really remarkable. Talking about all the things that we've achieved and accomplished for Canadians over the last decade has been, you know, really, really heartening. Canadians loved it. The room was full of energy, full of, you know, laughter, applause, and, and just positivity. L'énergie dans la salle est incroyable. On vient d'écouter le premier ministre qui vient de nous parler de, de l'économie du Canada, les emplois qu'on amène un peu partout au Canada. Les conservateurs ont laissé tomber plusieurs personnes, mais c'est le Parti libéral avec le premier ministre Justin Trudeau qui, qui nous a ramené des emplois au sud-ouest de l'Ontario, un peu partout au Canada. On est tellement fiers du travail que les libéraux sont en train de faire. J'espère que on, vous continuez à nous suivre et que vous avez l'énergie qu'on a présentement. Adam, est-ce que tu peux nous parler de, de, de comment les gens peuvent continuer à, à, faire, à participer euh, à partir de leur maison, euh, sur Internet, sur les médias sociaux? Well, I just want to welcome everybody, wherever you're joining from, from coast to coast to coast. This place is full of energy, but I know there's a lot of energy back home too, and I want to thank every volunteer, every person that's served in a, in a capacity, whether that's on a, an EDA or in a campaign, you know, whether you donate, whether you participate by making phone calls, you're part of this party and you're part of this progress. You know, over the last 
couple of hours. I've been walking around the room, talking to Liberals, engaging with Canadians and listening to their ideas. They're asking great questions and they've got some really, really fantastic perspectives. So, you know, the message from the Prime Minister tonight was just all about optimism, all about, you know, the, the fight ahead in the most positive and optimistic way. I'm energized and I know that anybody that was listening is too. On est un peu biasé, toi et moi, parce que nous sommes les députés du Parti libéral, mais je crois que tout le monde comprend que c'est ce parti est le parti qui croit en les femmes, aux enfants, à, à, aux travailleurs du Canada, à l'industrie du Canada, au futur du Canada et l'économie du Canada. On va bientôt pouvoir parler avec la ministre Jolie qui a introduit le, Canada, euh, le, le Premier ministre. Qu'est-ce que tu as pensé de son discours, le discours de Mélanie Jolie? Oh, it was also just full of optimism. But Melanie's got a different view than a lot of us MPs because she's been around the world. She's been talking to world leaders from countries from all over the planet. She's traveling to the UN. She was just in Africa visiting with people affected by the horrible conflict in Sudan. And her message to us is everybody around the world just loves Canada. And you know, we love them back, but it's also just great to know that our reputation internationally is so strong. People look to us as a source of inspiration when, when times are tough in their countries. And Canada just always been a place of refuge for people whose countries just you know aren't their homes anymore and like that's how my family arrived here that's how a lot of our families arrived Absolutely here and that message from Melanie today was just so so heartening that that she's our special envoy for everything she's traveling around the world representing our nation in that really progressive context and you know I was I was celebrating a little bit this week because it's Dutch Heritage Day and the admiration for our two countries the Netherlands and Canada is very very strong but I know that goes across the board with hundreds of nations across the across the world so yeah just so much optimism and energy from both ministers tonight Et pour le Québec euh, pendant le discours de Mélanie elle a mentionné du fait que le bloc québécois était là quand le quand Harper a coupé a voulu réduire pour, euh, les, 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 le accès au, à, à l'internet euh, à, à l'information euh, euh, pour tout euh, pour, le, pour tout le Québec donc euh, la, la même histoire qui se reproduit aujourd'hui avec le leader Poilièvre qui veut couper l'information pour les Québécois, pour nos langues officielles, pour, tout, pour tous les francophones en fait, d'un peu partout dans le Canada. Puis Mélanie a adressé ça dans son discours. Elle a parlé du fait que il faut que les gens savent que le leader du bloc québécois n'était même pas là quand il y avait cette discussion. Il n'était il même pas là. Ils n'ont ils ont pas soutenu au fait. Nous sommes le seul parti qui continue à croire que les Canadiens ont droit d'avoir accès à l'information dans la langue de leur choix. C'est important qu'on continue de parler de ça. Et maintenant, elle est là, elle nous joint. On va l'inviter, euh, la ministre des Affaires étrangères du Canada, Mélanie Jolie. Bienvenue, Mélanie. Bienvenue. Oui. Hey, bienvenue. Merci, merci. Good to see you, Adam. Good to see you too, hey, Mélanie. Hello, hello. Yes, I'm here. I'm Amazing here. speech. Thanks thank for your you. optimistic message. Thank it was you, just thank incredible. You. Thank you. Well, it was important to talk to liberals about, first and foremost, what is happening in the world, but second, what are progressive leaders saying about our own leader? Because he's the dean of all progressive leaders, and we've done so much, and a lot of prime ministers, heads of government, heads of states, are looking at Prime Minister Trudeau and our team to basically for inspiration, and to know how we did the great things we've been able to, to deliver for Canadians. You know, it's so interesting. I was talking to liberals from other countries, people who represent governments for other countries, exactly. Senegal, Macedonia, Spain, and their values are so well aligned with ours. They're fighting climate change. They're standing up for the middle class. They're making sure there's great jobs available, and they're also not forgetting anybody along the way. And, you know, the Prime Minister's message about Michael tonight was really, it really struck home for me because I thought of all, all the workers back in Milton. You know, it's a working class neighborhood with people who build stuff with their hands, and that's how our economy works. And I know that's not something that's lost on you as the MP for Hunsa Cartier Velos. No, of course not. And I was thinking, you were thinking about Milton. I was thinking about Hunsa Cartier for sure, for sure, for sure. Mélanie, je n'ai juste de discuter du fait que tu as parlé directement au Québec. Tu as parlé pour les Québécois qui... Euh, euh, donc, on a parlé de, de l'enjeu de, de, de CBC. Oui. Donc, parle-nous encore une fois pourquoi c'est important que le Québec se joint avec les libéraux. Mais c'est important. Pourquoi? Parce que on le sait, la dernière fois que Stephen Harper était au pouvoir, dans son dernier mandat, il y avait 49 députés du Bloc qui étaient à la Chambre des communes. Et à l'époque, Harper a coupé dans Radio-Canada, a, a fait en sorte de couper dans la culture de façon générale. Et on le sait, 
ça avait créé tout un mouvement de frustration chez les Québécois parce que les francophones au pays, les Québécois, ils veulent s'assurer de protéger leur langue dans un océan de millions de personnes qui sont anglo-saxonnes. Alors, c'est pourquoi c'est très important d'avoir des, des, des élus Québécois au gouvernement, qui sont capables de défendre la langue française, qui sont capables de défendre la culture québécoise et canadienne. Et c'est pourquoi nous, on, comme, comme libéraux, on a livré pour les Québécois. Et tu as été euh, parmi les pionnières qui ont fait que la C13 aujourd'hui est, euh, est, est un plan qui va bientôt être euh, palpable pour les communautés euh, francophones hors Québec. Est-ce que tu peux nous parler de ça un peu? Mais c'est sûr que les langues officielles, ça fait partie vraiment de la tradition du Parti libéral. On sait que le père du premier ministre, pierre Elliott Trudeau, a été le premier ministre, le premier premier ministre à, à vraiment faire en sorte qu'on ait une loi sur les langues officielles. Alors, 50 ans plus tard, c'était important qu'on puisse réaffirmer la protection du français, réaffirmer la protection aussi des droits des communautés linguistiques partout à travers le pays. Et c'est pourquoi la ministre Ginette petitpot taylor travaille très fort sur cette question-là et j'ai bien hâte qu'on puisse passer le projet de loi. Mélanie, tu reviens de Kenya oui. euh, pour parler de l'enjeu du Soudan. Oui. Est-ce que tu peux nous dire un peu et un message pour les, les, la, la communauté canadienne soudanaise qui nous oui. suit présentement? Et tu peux le dire aussi en anglais, en oui, français, oui, ça, oui. Nous, ça nous aide. Oui, en effet, je reviens du Kenya où j'ai eu l'occasion de rencontrer plusieurs personnes qui sont évacuées du Soudan. So I was just in Kenya and I met with many Canadians that have been evacuated. Uh, the, the situation is extremely difficult. They went through hell. And uh, what we need to do right now is to support the ceasefire, is to make sure also that there is humanitarian aid directly to the Sudanese people. We announced uh, Hart Shajan, the Minister of the Development, just announced 70 million dollars. You were there at the announcement also. And also, we will be there to help civilian voices within Sudan to be there and to have a voice at the table because it's important that we think about a lasting peace in Sudan and also in the region. And basically, my message to African leaders and to African um, you know, civil society is that when Canada knows that there is a crisis, well, we, we show up. We're there to help. And so we did that for Ukraine. We're doing that now for Sudan, and we'll continue to do it. And I, I want to thank your leadership, guys, for doing this. It's important. It's a tradition, every con you know, convention. So thank you for making sure that liberals from across the country can have uh, good interviews and, and, and also, you know, good speeches from you guys. <laughs> oh, no, well, thank beaucoup. you. And, you know, I think I speak for all Canadians that I'm just so, so proud that we have an international development commitment that meets international standards. Exactly. We have a foreign affairs, you know, strategy that yeah. is helping people around the world. We are proud of our international obligations and you're living up to those and exceeding many of those things. So I just want to thank, thank you, you on behalf of all Canadians that care about our plan <laughs> and our world. You know, sometimes yeah. our problems seem big in Canada, but then juxtaposed, you know, we realize we're very lucky to live in Canada. We also have a, a lot of challenges of our own to face. Yes. So, so thank you so much for being there for everybody. Merci énormément de, de venir parler avec tout ce qui nous regarde en ligne. On continue. Merci, Merci. Mélanie. Merci. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Bye. That was fun. That was great. Oui. I mean, she's incredible. She's incredible on stage, but one-on-one, -on -one, Melanie Jolie is just one of the greatest colleagues that we have. She's always there for us, um, even when she's abroad. You know, right. she's keeping in touch. She drops into her inboxes no matter where she is to keep, uh, keep us updated. And, you know, I remember back in 2019, I was, I was banging on doors the day where I found out that Andrew Scheer decided he was going to cut international development funding by 50%. He wanted to cut it in half. He wanted to say, the world doesn't need more Canada. And all of the greatest global leaders are saying the world needs more Canada. Barack Obama was saying, this is what the world needs, more Canada. And Andrew Scheer's response to that was, no, we'll give you half. So, you know, that really motivated me that day, and I'm so heartened by the work of Melanie Jolie. Vous l'avez bien entendu, donc euh, on va, euh, si vous êtes euh, aujourd'hui, vous, vous êtes joints à nous euh, en ligne, on vous remercie énormément, vous voyez l'énergie qui était dans la chambre, on espère que vous allez venir demain. Adam, est-ce que tu peux nous, nous parler du programme de demain un peu oui, absolument. So tomorrow we've got a packed day. It's starting early and it's going to go late. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hear from some legends, quite yes. frankly. It's going to be really, really exciting. You know, I'm from the generation where Jean Chrétien was just somebody that everybody looked up to. He was an extraordinary prime minister and is still an extraordinary Canadian. He's going to sit down with our new legend from Shawinigan, François-Philippe Champagne, for an incredible conversation. And I know that you're really, really excited about the second one, as I am too. But uh, what's after that? Uh, après ça, on va avoir uh, la, notre ministre, uh, uh, Christian Freeland, qui va parler avec uh, la, 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 
State um, Secretary of the Sec State. Secretary of State, merci. Yeah, uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton, on a tellement hâte. J'ai beaucoup de jeunes de, de ma comté qui sont ici pour pouvoir l'écouter parler. On a hâte. Uh, si, vous, si vous êtes toujours là, uh, n'oubliez pas de, de faire le hashtag Lib2023. Et n'oubliez pas aussi, si vous pouvez faire une donation sur uh, uh, 54222 ou bien aller sur libéral.ca pour faire une, uh, une donation. Absolutely, you can send a donation with 54222. You know how to make donations if you're watching this. We need your support at all times. But this is a great time to chip in and recognize why we're working so hard for Canada because we love our country. As the Prime Minister was just saying, we're all builders. Everybody in this room is contributing to the building of a better, stronger, healthier, happier country. And that's the energy here in this room tonight. Tomorrow is going to be maybe even better because it's a full day which is a really really uh you know it's an extraordinary weekend we're gonna have a lot of fun we're also going to be walking around and just engaging with liberals on the yeah. floor tomorrow so i'm looking forward to meeting more people talking to all of you and talking about all of the great ideas this convention is going to bring forth good night liberals see you tomorrow see you tomorrow